Welcome back to 58,000 seat Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona, where it's Georgia Tech with a record of 1-0, and and Arizona a record of 1-0 and as well after a huge win over Pacific last week. Who is you it? see the temperature, it is 79 degrees. Earlier today, it was near 100. Humidity at 29%. We've got a slight breeze coming out of the northwest. They thought it, there was a threat of rain, but nope, it is beautiful, and Dick Tomey was hoping there would be a slight breeze. What a marvelous coach he has been with this program was the 1992 Pac-10 Coach of the Year, and he needs six more wins to break the record of the great Bob McHale. On the other side is George O'Leary, who was their defensive coordinator until the final three games last year, took over for Bill Lewis, and they won their first game of the season last week winning 51 to 7 over Furman he says we are getting back to our roots they won a national championship with an option style offense with a quarterback by the name of Sean Jones and he has a quarterback in that style in this man Donnie Davis 6'3 192 a senior from Burlington North Carolina and when he came out of the high school ranks Willie they were talking Eric Zire Keith Schuler, and this man Donnie Davis the three best prep athletes in the country and he was ranked number one out of all those guys and thought he expected big things from him very interesting Georgia Tech won the, the toss and elected to kick so they want to test that their defense right away and it is David Frakes to kick off he's a sophomore from Rockford Illinois he was all state and the best kicker in the state of Illinois his senior year he had last year starter Chris Leon We've got the Yellow Jackets and the Wildcats. And Frakes with the kickoff. Taylor about four yards deep. He'll go to one knee. It'll be Arizona football at their own 20-yard line to start this ball game. And at quarterback is Dan White, number 16, 6'5", a senior from San Diego, California. Last week he had an excellent game with four touchdown passes was only intercepted one time. Last year, 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He said consistency is his key throughout this 1995 season. And we'll have Gary Taylor in the backfield. Rodney Williams, Richard Dice are his receivers. The fullback is number nine, Charles Miles. And he's gonna throw on first down to the right side and broken up beautifully. Nathan Perryman, their best defender on Georgia Tech in the secondary. Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Gary Taylor is their lead back. He gained 96 yards last week and is a game breaker. The receivers, Richard Dice, Mike Metzler, are very good, but Rodney Williams, they think, can be a game breaker. He had three catches and a touchdown last week. And on the offensive line, look at the man at left guard, Frank Middleton. He reported to camp at 378 pounds. He's down down to 360, but they will run on his side. Taylor, cut down, shy of the line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line. So the Ramblin' Wreck playing that style of smash out football, it's third and 12. And defensively for Georgia Tech, Hughes, Bradford, Jackson, and Miles. Jackson is their run stuffer. He is possibly Tech's best defensive lineman. Clements Brooking, Rogers is the man who has to take over for Jamal Cox, who led the entire Atlantic Coast Conference last year in tackles. Perryman is their best cornerback. He had two interceptions last year. A watch for Ryan Stewart had his best game of the season against Arizona. Third down and 12. Two receivers to the left. White with time. Going deep. Metzler wide open. Metzler's cut down to the 30-yard line. But it's been big plays early this year for Arizona. They had five big plays against Pacific. And they open with a bomb to the tight end, Mike Metzler. That was one thing defensive coordinator Brian Baker didn't want to happen. There's a big play. And it happened, and it just happened because the tight end went straight down the middle of the field. And the receiver stretched out the zone, so the tight end was basically one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Got open, caught the ball. It was a great throw, great catch. It was a great, great read by the quarterback. He was wide open. So on third and 12, they come up with a big play, and Metzler had 
one catch last week. It was for four yards and a touchdown. They really like his big play ability, and he is also a very fine blocker. They will sweep Taylor to the left side, and Gary loses a yard, so it'll be second down and 11. Well, Coach Baker, the defensive coordinator, said he wanted to roll call on the ball. He wanted 11 people on the ball, and basically they had a lot of people on the ball that time to stop that running game. There is Ron Rogers, the middle linebacker from Dublin, Georgia. He had one sack last week, and they need his interior pressure. Six tackles against Arizona last year. Wildcats, the winningest team in the Pacific 10 Conference the last three years. White will operate shotgun on second down and 12 yards to go. He'll run the ball, though. There is a flag down. But once again, Georgia Tech doing exactly what George O'Leary said he wanted his team to do, and that is stuff the run. He was worried about tackle to tackle, wasn't he, Willie? Yes, he, he really was worried about that. And, you know, uh, note that uh, the offensive line of Arizona averages about 276 pounds. The defensive line of uh, Georgia Tech averages about 265 pounds. So it's about 10 to 12 pounds, 10 to 11 pound difference there, and they want to try to push that ball up. Illegal formation, six men on the line, offense, repeat second down. It is an interesting comparison when you take a look at Dick Tomey had to replace all five starters on his offensive line, six of them include the tight end. And he had a couple of guys starting last week who only played scout team football last year. Well, I think it's a big credit to him to show a great deal of confidence in the offensive line to really let him run the ball. They've tried to run the ball here several times with no success thus far, but they're going to keep trying. Second down, 17 yards to go. We have no score with Arizona and Georgia Tech. The rush is on, White fires, incomplete at the 10-yard line. Again intended for his tight end, Metzler, who this time had double coverage from Gary Joseph and also Ryan Stewart, the free safety. Just off his fingertips. Actually, the ball was thrown great. It was either Metzler was going to get it or no one was going to get it. It was great coverage here. They, they doubled the tight end this time. Well, it went across in the zone, and uh, he threw the ball, and he just right out of the reach of the quarterback. But it was a good throw. Well, last time we saw a third and 12, and Arizona went deep <laughs> for some 40 yards to Metzler to the 30-yard line. They've gone backward ever since, and now Dick Tomey faces a third and 17. pocket but throws high to his favorite receiver Richard Dice incomplete it is fourth down 17 yards to go what will Arizona do here they have a kicker who hit one from 57 yards out last week well I see him jogging out and uh, he had he impressed me last week the kick might have been good from 60 62 yards has exceptionally strong leg and it was from this spot in the field he does have a slight breeze to his back John Prasoon. And he hits it. It's long enough. But it is wide to the right side. So Georgia Tech will take over for their first offensive possession at their own 20-yard line as John Prasoon misses his first field goal attempt this year. The Pac-10 game of the week on Prime Sports. Steve Fiziak, Willie Gold with you. No score. First three minutes of this game. And coming out at quarterback, Donnie Davis, a senior. He started two years ago. Was a wide receiver, a backup quarterback last year out of Burlington, North Carolina. 1,924 yards career. 12 touchdowns. 13 in receptions. But most of those numbers come from the 93 season. Chris Myers is the tight end. He sends in motions and he runs C.J. Williams up the middle past the 35 to the 36-yard line where he was stunned by both Chuck Osborne and Joe Salabella. We'll set the offense for you. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Georgia Tech, going with Donnie Davis, C.J. Williams, and Charles Wiley. He's a complete back as well, 79 yards last week. Harvey Middleton has to take over for the injured Derek Stiegel, who is their game-breaker. Middleton has to have a big game. Michael Cheever perhaps will be an All-American. He's a natural center, a four-year starter. Middleton goes in motion, and again, they give the football to C.J. Williams, and he has stopped again. 
Well, they're trying to go power and power. That's the, the power of, of this defense, this eagle flex. They, they shoot the gaps and they make sure there's no running lanes. And Georgia Tech is trying to attack that to really establish something. Arizona's defense, Sprott, Salavea, Osborne, Tuane is a man, and Osborne had 11 sacks last year. Teddy Bruschi has been moved to linebacker. He'll play both the whip linebacker and also what they call the stud defensive end. And the secondary, Brandon Sanders, probably is their most valuable player on defense. He's been moved from strong to free safety tonight simply because of the option offense. The fullback will go for the first down, and then a flag goes flying. It was Charles Wiley, the redshirt freshman from Miami, Florida, and a huge hole opened up on that left side. Oh, that was wonderful. That was a wonderful hit by Brian Sanders. The big hole, great blocking, and everything else, but Brian watches the end of the play. Brandon Sanders comes up and really lays a hit on it. I think he wants to, he really wants to hit this guy. Watch it comes up and just hole cock. Bam! Oh, oh Big time hit. Well, they're bringing this one back. Repeat third down. There is an illegal formation. They'll repeat the third down. And instead of third down and seven, or actually instead of the first down, it will be third down and about 12 yards to go as a football back at the 33-yard line. Well, Steve, this is the type of thing you have to do against this aggressive eagle flex. You've got to run draws, you've got to run screens, you've got to really uh, make them not do what they want to do up front. Let's shoot those gaps and really cause some problems in your running game. We're nearing the 10-minute mark of the first quarter. Still looking for our first score with Georgia Tech in Arizona. Oh, and a fumble. Flag will go flying. I'm not sure if Davis was expecting the snap from Cheever. Well, what happened is Cheever saw the defensive lineman jump offside. He tried to get five yards for, for offside. But the different defender might have got back. We'll see. Might have gotten enough. Offside. Defense. No. Repeat third down. That's a, that's, a, that's a very aggressive play and a, an experienced play by Cheever. He sees the guy go offside. He's taught to snap the ball right away. And you've got to hope that the official's going to throw the flag or you might bumble <laughs> away to the other team. Absolutely. So we're back where they started from. Third down and seven. Last time they had this, they ran the draw to Charles Wiley, the fullback. Bruski's the defensive end now on the right side. Now he'll be a stand-up outside linebacker. He does not come. They give the fullback to C.J. Williams, who smashes the head past the 45 and gets the first down. Oh, what a tough run by C.J. Williams. What a great run by just a, a great exceptional athlete. They thought he had him basically, but he just kept his feet moving and kept turning and just got in the yard. You'll see the DB comes up and tries to make the tackle here. And, we, we, good, great second effort here. He just goes through and right through, right through the one of the best, the best players on the team, Brandon Sanders. Well, he's an interesting story in his own right. He was a defensive back last year. They had three defensive backs go down, <laughs> and uh, Coach O'Leary said, "Hey, I want you to be the main guy. Will you come over?" He did. He averaged 142 yards rushing in his last three games, and they try him up the middle, and C.J.'s past the 40 to about the 37-yard line where Chester Burnett makes the tackle. Well, he's C.J. is definitely the main man this year. He's getting the ball, and they're trying to attack the heart of Arizona's defense, and that's the up-front lineman. They're, they're trying to get holes in between that the Eagle Flex defense. Number 35, Chester Burnett, is a big story this year because he replaces Sean Harris. He's now playing with the Chicago Bears, and Harris, their leading tackler. And you watched the Pacific game last week, and you said whoever is in the middle has a big responsibility. Here's the responsibility. Because they have to be able to go sideways, lateral, lateral and be able to attack the ball and cover. And with a, with a runner like CJ and a guy that can catch the ball, it's going to be very tough for him. Charles Wiley on the catch. Very close to a first down. You see, a great pass by Dunny. Just a flat, by the, the back goes in the flat, just catches the ball, picks up uh, a couple yards, eight, eight, nine yards, and that's what you want. Third, third and short is a great situation to be in sometimes. Defensive coordinator, Larry McDuff said, third and short situations will be critical tonight. They run the option. This means C.J. Williams first down Georgia Tech to the 25-yard line. Brandon Sanders knocks him out of bounds. That's what happens when you have a quarterback like, like Donnie Davis. I mean, he puts so much pressure on that defensive end. And to go out there, you either, you either commit to him or you commit to the runner. As, as he goes out, you can see the defensive end has to, or the defensive back here has to commit either to Donnie or the running back. And once he commits to Donnie, just pitch it to the running back to get the first down. 
And Georgia Tech with an impressive opening drive. They've taken the football from near their own 30-yard line, actually from their 20-yard line, all the way to the Arizona 25. And this is one of the best run defenses in the nation the last three years. In motion is Cedric Zachary. C.J. Williams, big hole, near another first down. You know, interesting stat, uh, last year, 70% of the plays that have run in Arizona have gained only two yards or less, but Georgia Tech is doing a great job here running, blocking. The, the linemen are just opening up these holes, and the Arizona defense is trying to pinch, but they're pinching in the different ways, and they're just opening up holes for them. Well, we told you about the inexperience on Dick Tomey's offensive line for Georgia Tech. It is just the opposite. They've got all five guys who started at some time last year. They're proving it right now. Davis, Williams, first down inside the 10-yard line. This is very impressive by Georgia Tech here. They're going right after the heart and soul of Arizona's team, their defense, and they're really taking it to them. And, you know, their, their defensive coaches said, we want a slobber knocker here. And that's basically what they're doing. They're really, uh, the offensive linemen are really taking it to the defense of, of Arizona and making it a great game. 20 yards against Arizona last year, and they still almost won the ball game. They have 52 on their opening drive, and they have a first and goal at the Arizona seven and a half yard line. for your team you go on a good drive and you score holding you get a holding back you know going in. Yards just, they have to really come back here because that could really be a letdown there oh the great run by the running back by tj and it was just wonderful here the hole just opens up and you know i, I guess it would call the holding so that's why it opened up but as you can see here oh my god great leap of course he's a point guard on the basketball team so you get up and get that rebound 30 inch vertical jump Watch the hole on the right side. There's the hole right there. Number 70. Almost a tackle. Maybe that's why Osborne couldn't get to him. <laughs> Jason Dukes, number 70, got that call. So now it's first and goal for Georgia. Tech, Georgia, Georgia O'Leary's football team from the 20-yard line will dump it off. And Wiley had blockers but couldn't hold on. He looked like he had about 10 yards down that left sideline. Well, he had definitely had blockers in front of him. He could have held on. He would have been pretty close to a touchdown there. Really close. He had blockers in front of him. So a little attitude. What gain is he without the ball? You know, he's trying to run before he got it. Have to look that ball all the way in. It's very important. And really, we would like to welcome the Sunshine Network to a Pac-10 game of the week. It's Georgia Tech in Arizona. No score with 8.15 remaining in the first quarter, but a very impressive drive. Architect is that man, Donnie Davis. Wiley's the long setback. And the whistle's blowing prior to. So unless someone was lining up in the neutral zone, No play, dead ball, ball start, offense. George O'Leary said execution and poise are two very big pieces. We have to be able to block and tackle it. It sounds so cliche, right. but they really have to do against an Arizona team that is very turnover conscious. Georgia Tech can't afford to make these type of mistakes and, and win this game. Uh, their team is not a great, great team. They're going to be very good, but they're not a great team to be able to make these type of mistakes and take away touchdowns. The touchdown will pick away. The run with a slot to the left side, Omar Cassidy, is the one wide receiver left. And they'll run the football right, and this time Arizona's all over the plate. Thomas, Thomas Demps, who just came off of the sideline, makes the tackle. He's an outside linebacker from Winter Park, Florida who was expected to start tonight, but when they started Jimmy Sprott, Demps went to the sideline and Bruski took his spot. Well, he just came straight down and uh, made the tackle. And there's the rushing defense story of Arizona. Second, first, and second the last three years. 1993, 1994, 
great. They allowed 30 yards rushing per game. Unheard of. That's in the country, not just back then. That's amazing. That's what it is. I did the Stanford Arizona game that year, and I think Stanford had minus 50 yards rushing. <laughs> Most of them obviously sacks. C.J. Williams. Nope. Charlie Kent. <laughs> Larry McDuck, the defensive coordinator, calls Charlie one of our smartest players, and he calls a lot of the signals. It is fourth down, and we'll see Dave Brakes attempt his longest field goal of his career. This will be from 33 yards out. It's good, and Georgia Tech has taken an early 3-0 lead. Hitting from 33. 3-0, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has a 3-0 lead on a 43-yard field goal by David Brakes. 6.54 remaining here in the first quarter. Scoring drive, 12 plays, 40 yards, and Brakes hits it through to give the random wreck the early lead in this game. And there is their quarterback, Donnie Davis. So beautifully along with running back C.J. Williams. Taylor on the return. Taylor down the right sideline. Terry Taylor with an outstanding return. Back across the 40-yard line. And Arizona will have outstanding field position to start their second possession. A 50-yard return by Terry Taylor. Well, Steve, that's the way you run a kickoff return. You have to be there and go full speed at what's coming. The, when the blockers are there, you have to be there to make the move. Everyone gets crashed inside, and Taylor just sees the outside, and he goes for it, goes outside, and just clear grass. And here the kicker, of course, impedes him from going straight up field, makes him slow down a little bit, so the pursuit catches up. But a wonderful, wonderful kickoff return for Arizona. Gary Taylor's twin brother is Gary, and he is the running back. On, the high school team carries the quarterback, and this man is carrying it with a main running back and Gary was the California Junior Player of the Year in 1990 with over 2,600 yards but Willie when your brother's the quarterback I think he's calling your number a lot that's right hey brother give me the ball <laughs> the Taylor Taylor connection I was born four minutes ahead of you <laughs> that's give right it to me. give it to me yeah, but Georgia Tech had to be a little disappointed in the last drive because they gave up four points and that could be a big big thing at the end of the game your four points could mean the game they had the touchdown remember then the holding call throw. Looking right sideline, but his receiver was shoved out of bounds, Rodney Williams. Very good coverage from Nick Ferguson, number 40. Ralph Hughes was applying the pressure for Georgia Tech on Dan White. Well, they had a zone coverage where the, the defensive back had a man-to-man -man base and the free safety number 24. Uh, Ryan Stewart just comes over and really gets him over the top so he doesn't get anything long. It was a good coverage, zone coverage. So White now faces a third and nine as Arizona has not been able to get the running game going at all. They have minus yards rushing in this game. Gary Taylor, big hole this time, and Gary passed the 35 to the 34. Keith Brooking on the tackle. A 6'3 sophomore from the state of Georgia. Played a little outside linebacker last year. They moved him inside this year because of his great tackling ability against the run you know when you, when you look on this Georgia Tech defense most of all those players are red shirt juniors or freshmen or sophomores and they do a lot of red shirting down there <laughs> so they have a little more experience than you might imagine and they're playing like it right now with a 3 nothing lead on the number 17 team in the nation the Arizona Wildcats That young lady is hoping her favorite field goal kicker, John Pursoon, can hit from 51 yards out. 5.38 remain in this first quarter. We told you Pursoon last week hit one from 57. His earlier attempt was long enough, but just wide to the right side. John Pursoon was a senior from this very town, Tucson, Arizona, went to South Point High School. Replaces All-American Steve McLaughlin, who is now the starting kicker for the St. Louis Rams. From 51 yards out. Oh man, he hit it well. It hits the crossbar. And the yellow. 
Yellow Jackets hold on to their 3 nothing lead. So as good as Prasoon was last week, he has hit the ball well tonight, but just slicing it wide. Well, he definitely has the distance. I right? just have to get the accuracy. Here, just kicked the ball. It goes up. Great kick. It has the distance. Oh, I wonder how many more times he can do that, hit it up like that. We've got a timeout on the field. Five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Georgia Tech by three. Steve Fiziak, Willie Gall, back with you in Tucson, Arizona for the Pac-10 game of the week. Georgia Tech with a 3-0 lead. And the Yellow Jackets have the football. Donnie Davis back at quarterback. And his running back, Charles Wiley. And Wiley gets the call to carry. And he's out past the 35-yard line. To the 36, a gain of two. And right now, Willie, Georgia Tech has 54 yards rushing to Arizona's five. Well, that, that's amazing because Arizona, I mean, that one year they, they, they averaged 30 yards per, per for the whole season. Rushing has 51 already, 54 already. So that's uh, incredible. And Georgia Tech, I know the offensive line and Coach Pat Watson has to really be pleased with the offensive line thus far. They brought in Matt Gruba as the pullback. He's a very good blocker. He wears number 34. Davis on second and eight. They'll run the ball again, and Charles Wiley slipping the first tackle and gaining maybe two yards to the 38-yard line. But what a tackle made by Teddy Bruschi. But what a nice move. I mean, you, you can't teach those things. You talk about them and everything else, but you have to actually do them in a game. And it was clogged up, and he just made a little step to the right side and went up in the hole. It was a great move and great athletic intensity. Well, Wiley and his teammate C.J. Williams knew they would have experience in the offensive line. McGee has 19 starts. Cheever, four-year starter now. Dukes, 26 starts. Those are the veterans. And then you also have Garner and Sellers, who has started quite often last year as regards. Davis back to throw on third and six. Pass is complete, very close to a first down. They're going to give him his forward momentum, which will be a first down. So... That was a great throw and catch, and what, what Georgia Tech has to do now is just really mix it up a little bit more. They've, they've shown that they can run the ball on it, but uh, she can go to the well too many times, it might run dry. And, say. and did you see that cast on Thomas Demps? He has a cast on his left arm. He missed most of last year with an injured right ankle, and then he's getting ready for spring football practice, and he falls off a horse, breaks his arm, misses spring football. But I tell you what, if he does a Fred the Hammer Williamson, <laughs> it's a big out. <laughs> I think for both sides. I think so. Charles Wiley struggling to find yardage. You know, one thing George O'Leary said about his football team in the offense was we cannot get frustrated even though we might be gaining one or two yards. Well, when you look at it, they're really a young offense as far as the skilled people. The offensive lineman is pretty experienced, but the quarterback is young. Their, their running back is really young. Only started four or five games. Receivers are young. And so they have to really be patient and you know, attack, attack, and mix it up and do misdirection plays and everything else, which will really get this defense off, off balance. They're so aggressive. Davis on second down nine. And Donnie will keep it himself, and he's near midfield. He gains about three or four yards before Chuck Osborne brings him down. Osborne, one of the more unsung defensive players in the Pac-10 last year, with 11 sacks to lead the team and lead Mr. Bruski by one. You know, those are the types of things you have to do on this flex defense because the flex defense is basically a combination of the four, bare 46 defense and it's also the goal line defense where you're pinching everyone in and you're trying to really clog up those holes. So when you do misdirection plays, you can do that. Well, this is what Arizona's defense did against Pacific last week. UOP only with one first down on a third down situation. Davis delivered, incomplete, intended for Harvey Middleton, the sophomore from Jamestown, South Carolina. It was a timing pattern where the quarterback and the receiver had to be on timing. If the quarterback could have gotten the ball there in the right time, it would have been a completion, but there was a double coverage uh, by Arizona defense, and they covered it very well. So the punting team comes on for Georgia Tech, and that means Keith Weaver, who may not have the strongest of the two kickers, Rodney Williams, is a young freshman who think, they think might be a tremendous punter. Richard Dice is the return man standing at the 10-yard line. 6'3", 
217. How many punt returns did you see this time? <laughs> and Dice lets it go into the end zone where Arizona will have a first and 10 at the 20. Let's go downstairs to Tom Kirkland. Steve, you know, we've been talking about how physical this Arizona football team is. Well, just a minute ago, receivers coach Dino Babers just lit into his receiving core saying, hey, Tech's bringing eight guys to the line. Are you going to block some people? He says, I don't see any of the Tech defensive backs mad at you guys. You better hit some people. Are you tired? So clearly, there's some concern here on the Arizona sideline that the offensive uh, folks aren't being physical enough, if you can imagine that. And George O'Leary says, what makes Arizona great is they not only tackle you, but they tackle you angry. That's right. And perhaps they're not showing that angry right now. Kevin Schmidt's in the game. He was the hero in last year's win. He scored that short touchdown with 29 seconds left. And brought Arizona back. They won the game 19-14. And he was a true freshman last year when he scored the game winner and had 92 yards rushing. You know, Coach Toomey was a little little bit uh, disappointed last week with the game, even though they won big. He was a little disappointed at the uh, overall aggressive and hustle of the defense and the offense. So he wants to get back to that winning way this year. So it's a gain of two, second down eight yards. They go Schmitke's way again. He's a north-south runner. He'll bang at you, and he rambles to the 29-yard line. Kevin Schmitke, another local guy from Mountain View High School here in Tucson. He was the 3A Arizona High School rushing champion with over 5,000 yards rushing in his four-year career. Well, they decided to go a little change of pace from Gary Tater to, to carry Gary's Kevin Schmitke to, to try to get some yardage here, and they've really done, done well here. They've got nine yards on two carries with us far, which is a big difference from the, the first series. I have a feeling Dick Tomey is going to go to number 34 again. Richard Dice, Mike Lucky in the game. Double tight end look. Schmitke this time sweeping right. He will get it. He's stopped by Georgia Tech at the 26-yard line. <laughs> and the guy who made that tackle was number 32, the wide side cornerback. Uh, he didn't get the receiver, Perryman. Perryman, of course, was being blocked by Dice, and Dice just didn't get the job done. And that's exactly what, what the coach has said there. He wanted the receiver to do a lot of blocking. He just crashed in and beat the block and really made the tackle. So it's Matt Payton time. He hit one from 52 yards last week. Georgia Tech gets it back. A 44-yard punt by Matt Payton. And Arizona really scrambling for it, but Nathan Perryman, remember their main return man is Derek Stiegel. He's not here. And what caused that is a tremendous pressure by number 37, Armand Williams, by running down full speed, and he flashed in front of Perryman, and it really made him look at him instead of looking at the ball, and thus made him almost. Willie, you're a former great wide receiver, and you used to stretch defenses. Derek Stiegel is their speed guy. How, how does that change maybe Arizona's defensive thoughts? Well, it gives them an opportunity to play a little bit more man coverage and do some things that they wouldn't normally do if they had a speed of receiver out there to really put some pressure on the defensive back. So now from the 32-yard line, we'll get a chance to see that eagle flex defense again. Oh, look who got through. He has had a heck of a game already. C.J. Williams from West Point, Georgia. And here is a guy who is closing in on the 100-yard mark already in the game. Close to 70 yards rushing in the first quarter alone. And it's Georgia Tech by three over Arizona. We'll come right back with the Pac-10 Game of the Week from Tucson, Arizona. Crowd of near 50,000 on hand in Tucson, Arizona. And their Wildcats are down to Georgia Tech. Still smiling. Three quarters to go. Georgia Tech's running game. Absolutely excellent in the first period. And C.J. Williams is through again. And he's to the 35. He's to the 25. And C.J.'s finally brought down at the 18-yard line. <laughs> Just a wonderful job of running. CJ, this guy was definitely out of position last year at defensive back. Uh, what a wonderful hole. The offensive lineman doing a great job of cutting down that uh, Eagle Flex defense and opening up holes for the run through. A couple of missed tackles there, but CJ 
oh my gosh, what a, what a big disappointment would have been to keep him at defensive back last year. C.J. Williams. Oh, gosh. Very instinctive and the, the play of the la last quarter, that last run. I mean, it was so instinctive going in. It was clogged up. He came out, found the holes, and ran really well. I mean, it's something you can really can't teach. It's instinctive. Boy, was he out of position last year at defensive back. He's running like Eddie Lee Ivory. <laughs> Absolutely. C.J. Williams. Let's check out our first quarter notes. Georgia Tech kicked a field goal on their very first drive, a 40-yard drive, after a touchdown by C.J. Williams was called back because of holding. Prasoon of Arizona, who was two for two last week, including one from 57, misses from 52 and 51. And look at the rushing totals. Georgia Tech even more than that right now after that last long run by C.J. Williams, but Arizona with only eight yards rushing. Williams, 104 yards rushing, and Arizona has not given up given up 100 yards to a rusher in three years. But look at that average, 9.5 yards of rush. Those are receiving average. That's a great, of course, that 36 run, yard run didn't hurt there, but a wonderful average for, for, for carry. And we are told he was a better defensive back in high school than he was at running back, even though he averaged 10 yards a carry in high school. I don't think so. <laughs> well, maybe he was that good at DB. <laughs> maybe he can go both ways, right? Go back to the Rick Rangers and the Tim Thorpe. Yeah. Well, last week he had 151. He's got 104 already. Davis says, let's keep it in the ground, let's keep it to CJ, and he is through to the 15, to the 14-yard line where Thomas Demps makes the tackle. You know, interesting note, last year CJ had some problem with fumbling, and the Coach O'Leary said they went back after the offseason and they looked at it through x-rays and they saw that he had a problem with his shoulder. Did a little collective, uh, corrective surgery, and uh, he's had no fumbles here tonight thus far, but he's, he's done very well. So now from the 14-yard line. talk about exploding onto the college football team. You're seeing you're talking C.J. Williams, and he almost breaks that tackle. He is finally wrapped up between the 12 and 13 yard line by Teddy Bruschi, the defensive end from Roseville, California, who got the start at inside linebacker tonight. No players rushed for 100 yards against the Wildcats in the last 35 games. Shambi Wright Fair ran for 112 three years ago. Williams tonight has 108. Shambi Wright Fair played for Washington State. And that's just after one quarter. Third down and five. Davis dumps it off. Williams drops the tackle. Oh, Williams has the first down at the two yard line. <laughs> I'm more impressed by CJ. I mean, that, that was a great catch. He can catch the ball, too. But if you look what he does after he catches the ball, I mean, really, he was tackled. But he makes a couple moves all out Barry Sanders, of course, not as great as Barry. But, I mean, these moves are something you can't really teach. Look at that. I mean, make, make these guys miss the ball. The shake and bake and get down and get what he can. This guy really hasn't missed a beat. Kelly Malvo almost pulled the football away before his knee hit. But his knee was down, so it's first and goal from the two-yard line. Davis will keep it himself, and he even gets some lean forward and may have gained maybe a foot. Charlie Camp and Rasheed Johnson, the cornerback, on the stop. Brandon Sanders, of course, was over in that area. And now that's how you blow up that option play. You have to, they had three men over there on two. Uh, Rashi Johnson just came in and took the quarterback, and there were two people on the running back, so they couldn't, he couldn't uh, flip the ball. So that's the way you have to defend that uh, option play. Out comes center Michael Cheever. For this veteran offensive line is opening big holes against a tremendous college football defense. Double tight end. C.J. Williams. I tell you, it doesn't get him. No, he's running full speed, and that was against Arizona's biggest tackler, Brandon Sanders. And he just ran right through the tackle. He didn't wrap up. I mean, he, good, great power just came up through there, running ball, north and south. He sees a hole. He goes up through number 45. Oh my gosh! Through Charlie Camp, who's a linebacker, and didn't wrap up. And uh, Coach, of course, Coach Toomey is not going to be excited about that. 
and George O'Leary. Well, the extra point fails from Dave Frakes, so the score is 9-0 Georgia Tech. What a surprise. A team that was 1-10 a year ago in the ACC and college football leads number 17 Arizona by 9. There's the Georgia Tech hero in the first 17 and a half minutes of this college football game. This guy is one of those fellows that you can say, that man is an athlete. He is a guard on Georgia Tech's basketball team. Plays for Bobby Kremens, averaged four points per game, but we're told he will not go back because he thinks he has a very good future in football. I would say so. After his performance or not, I would definitely say that. And on the other side, Larry McDuff. He's telling his Wildcats to bear down. They've got to play better. Terry Taylor finds that right sideline again and is out near the 25-yard line. See if the Arizona offense can bear it down. Ryan Stewart making that tackle along the sideline of Terry Taylor. Number 34 knocked him out of bounds. Georgia Tech went 68 yards in just over two and a half minutes. T.J. Williams scored a to touchdown. It's his fourth this year line. after scoring three last week in their 51-7 romp over Division I AA Furman. Gary Taylor's not lined up wide, so he's going to be for that. Four wide receivers in Arizona will operate out of the shotgun. Gary Taylor. Close to a first down. You like that, don't you, really, when they line him up? Because usually a linebacker is going to have to cover number four. Absolutely. We talked to, to Brian Baker, the, the de defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech. We said, well, what's going to happen when, when they line Gary Taylor up there? Are you going to put a linebacker or a defensive back on him? He said, well, we're going to just play our defense. So we're going to put a linebacker on him and two of pieces. And if, if you see him doing, catching a lot of passes, we'll see a defensive back on him and play more zone. I would think you'd have to roll the zone over with his speed because if a linebacker is one-on-one, -on -one, he's got to go deep. Well, that's what Arizona's looking for, that type of mix match. And if they can get that, you'll, you'll see Gary have a big night. Richard Dice is off on the left. And Danny White is going to run the football again. Not much there. Gary Taylor stuffed again. And Keith Brooking on the tackle, the inside linebacker. I'll tell you, this, this Georgia Tech defense is like swarming bees. I mean, they're they're everywhere, and they're just attacking the ball. They're not giving really uh, Gary much running lanes. Looks like Brandon Sanders has gone to his corner to get his eye fixed up. I mean, they're like a stunned boxer right now. They can't believe what is happening. Is this Buster uh, Douglas hitting us? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> Williams is just pounding them. Second down, nine yards to go. is made. Dice had to come back for it. Very close to a first down. But they think Richard Dice may not have as many catches as he had last year, but they feel he'll make more big plays. This is a simple curl pattern. You go down about 10 to 12 yards and you turn around and come straight back to the quarterback so that you can get the ball coming back toward the quarterback here. As you see, he just catches the ball in front of the defender. No one else can catch it but, but Dice. They have to do more of that. If they can do more of that, keep this this uh, defensive line from attacking them and, and stopping this run. He is a big receiver at six feet two, 216 pounds. Returns punts. So they get the first down and White rolling away from trouble and then throwing the pass away from Harry Taylor where Al Jackson was pressuring Dan White. Misdirection play. You can try to get the linemen going one way because they're aggressive. They're doing so, so well as far as attacking. So they fake to the left side and the quarterback will roll back around and try to hit the receiver in the flat. Uh, but it was very well played by Georgia Tech. Arizona is running a lot of three wide out, four wide out. And they feel they can do that because they have a veteran quarterback. Why? Well, they have to spread this Georgia Tech defense out, first of all. They do that three wide receivers, and you spread it out, and there are not as many people in there, but they're still, still doing very well, even being spread out. Second and ten. Got a tight end, or rather Jeff Chison came back with the football. He is one of their four wide receivers tonight backing up Richard Dice, but in that three wide outlook, 
Chison came on and makes the play. A very short game, though. It still remains third down and eight, and Dan White has been in so many third and long situations where the ends are coming, the linebackers might be blitzing, and White, four of nine after completing close to 63% of his passes last week. Well, I'm not sure if this is the type of game that Arizona really wants to play. They want to be able to ball control and run it. They're not having a lot of success running, so they have to go to the pass more. They're splitting up the tight end now. Oh, what a great defensive play by free safety Ryan Stewart. He was hurt against Arizona last year and really never came back, but Stewart had a huge game against the Wildcats. 11 tackles, a fumble recovery. A couple of broken up passes and he has his first breakup tonight. And that's what you have to do for, for a, a receiver like Gary Taylor coming in the backfield. You gotta put a speed guy on him, especially going in the flat like that, because the linebacker most times just can't cover that pass. But uh, Ryan Stewart was able to go out and, and break up the play. Well, after that first bomb to Mike Metzler, Arizona has been searching for a big play. They haven't gotten it offensively, they have not gotten it defensively. And now Peyton hits it. Fair catch made at the 11-yard line by Nathan Perryman. We've got a time out of the field. Nine minutes, 48 seconds to play first half. Georgia Tech, 9 nothing over the Wildcats. Arizona coach Dick Tomey won eight games last year. We asked him what he wanted to accomplish early in 1995. Well, I think early in the season, your, your team is still trying to find its own identity and trying to establish a work ethic and a, and a way of playing and, and that's what I'm looking for I, I think uh, we just want to play hard do things right and be physical and if we can do those three things then we're going to be satisfied with what we see and the winning will take care of itself they have not been physical with Georgia Tech in the first half of this football game as Tech taking it right at Arizona and winning the game 9-0 Brandon Sanders on the tackle but another healthy game for the Ramblin' Wreck, and they're throwing the football, they're running in it well, as C.J. Williams has rushed for 112 yards, but tell me with 55 wins, this is his ninth year as a head coach after coming from Hawaii, and he's done a brilliant job when you consider he's completely revamped both the offense and the defense. They were in, off in offense, they are now a more pro style, they were a 50 base defense, and now they're that eagle flex. This time it's tough. Kruski was there. Chuck Osborne was there. Joe Salabella was there. And a flag was also there. I think that little pep talk on the sideline might have done something for Arizona defense. The coach came over and he really said, you guys got to get it in gear. That's a straight handoff up the middle and they're met by the, the entire offensive line, defense line of Arizona just in there and making sure that they get nowhere. I'll tell you what, I was very impressed by, by uh, Donnie Davis' throwing. He throws a nice soft pass, that last pass is in the flat, a simple five-yard hitch pattern where the receiver go down five yards, stop, catches the ball, Donnie throws a really soft pass and he's able to uh, get that ball in there, and I was very, very impressed by him. I saw Illegal him formation, the six men on the line, penalties decline, holding, offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. So that will push the football inside the 10-yard line. George O'Leary, who came into this football game, he was a defensive line coach for Bobby Ross of the San Diego Chargers, and before that with Coach Ross at Georgia Tech when they won the national championship in 1990. And he said, when we won, we ran the option, we had a great quarterback from Sean Jones, and we had a very good defense. We've seen that tonight in this game, first 20 plus minutes. Second and 14. Charles Wiley threw past the 10 out near the 12-yard line, but it'll still be third down and long. You know, Georgia Tech can't continue to make the mistakes that they're making. I mean, they're a holding penalty. They get pushed back. They can't be in this position. They really, when you look at it, should have 14 points on the board. They have nine. It's going to make a big difference in a game like this because Arizona, I mean, the game is not even halftime. They have plenty of time to win, you know, come back and do well. So they got to be able to put every point they possibly can on the board at any time they can. But Arizona is a big play defense. We haven't seen a big play tonight. We haven't seen a sack. We have not seen an interception. It's something they were short on last year, and now time will be called. 
as the clock was winding down, Davis noticed it and calls time with seven minutes and 56 seconds remaining in this first half. Georgia Tech nine and Arizona nothing. Donnie Davis has led this team well every time he's run the option. He has only run it three times giving it up so many occasions to C.J. Williams, who's run for 112 yards in this game. Well, he's a talented quarterback, and I kind of find it surprising that after a solid year in 1993, leading this team to five victories, he was forced out of the lineup and Tommy Luganville took over. Well, Luganville saw the direction that Coach O'Leary was going back to and transferred to Eastern Kentucky. Meantime, he calls Davis in and says, what, what, where do we recruit you to be? He said a quarterback, and he goes, well, then let's play you back there. And he goes, I'm ready, coach. Absolutely. That says a lot for Coach O'Leary. I mean, he saw a talent, he knew what he wanted, and he went out and said, hey, what are you doing at receiver? You came here as a quarterback, why don't you go back to quarterback? And he did everything he could to make sure that he gave himself the, the best opportunity to be a great quarterback. And remember, he was listed among the top three in all high school football five years ago, along with the names Eric Zier and Heath Schuler, both who are now in the NFL. They run the football, and they do not get the first down. Out at the 18-yard line, Brandon Sanders is there to slow things up. So, too, is Mike Sloco, the middle linebacker, and Charlie Camp. Really, that was a smart play by Georgia Tech there. You're down deep in your end zone. You don't want to do anything to, to get an interception or a fumble or another penalty. So you run a simple draw play who Wally, of course, is double as a fullback and one and tailback. He gets, gets some much-needed yardage. Richard Dice will be waiting Keith Weaver's punt. Dice brought one back 36 yards last week. Arizona needs something like that. Boy, he hammers this one high in the air. Dice will bring it. Cannot slip the tackle at the 45-yard line. Kofi Smith on the tackle. 41 yards on the punt. Dice stays in as wide receiver. Let's go down the field to our partner Tom Kirkland. All right, fellas, as you can see, this offensive line is definitely not dome alone. At the strong suggestion of senior co-captain Mike Cheever, the starting center, the entire offensive line shaved their heads. Partly a show of unity, part a continuing of the tradition at Georgia Tech. And speaking of getting back to basics, when Cheever was two years old, his family moved him to the wilderness of, <laughs> moved him to the wilderness of Alaska. Tom on this field, Dan White trying to go deep to Richard Dice, but Nathan Perriman, who has been so good at cornerback, was there to knock it down. Oh, what a great play by Perriman. Actually, Dice had him beat, no problem, and uh, Dan just didn't put a, get him enough uh, ball there. He had him beat, no problem, but Dice just really hustled and got there, and Perriman was there to break it up. So now on second down and 10 yards to go, White now just four of 11 through the air. And he may have to go back there again. They have not run the ball well at all. Gary Taylor sweeping left. Gary Taylor to midfield. And then he's run down by Nick Ferguson, the cornerback. Ferguson, number 40, is an interesting story. A former walk-on. Played one year at Morris Brown College in Atlanta. And he thought his skills were good enough to play at the next level. So he asked to walk on. And they said your skills sure are good enough not only that here's a scholarship that's right you have to be assertive in this league and the good thing about it, what arizona did that it threw it deep the first time it got georgia set thinking about throwing the ball passing and they were able to run the ball for eight seven eight yards there third down two yards to go But it's C.J. Williams on offense. This guy has got to be the MVP of the first half defensively for Georgia Tech. Well, Perriman is a wide side defensive back. That means whenever the field is wide, then he's going to go to that side. And he's basically covering Dice here. And uh, it Actually, it was up for grabs, and Dice just tried to go up over him, and Perriman just wanted to make sure that the ball was batted down. They have absolutely controlled Arizona's offense. The only time Arizona busted loose 
was on a 35-yard pass from White to tight end Mike Metzler. After that, it's been like four and out. Great punt, but it goes into the end zone to Georgia Tech with six minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half with a 9-0 lead. We've got a timeout on the field. Tech will come back with C.J. Williams at running back. Georgia Tech 9-0 over Arizona. Tom Kirkland, finish your story on Grizzly Adams' Michael Cheever. Part two of the Cheever story, as I was saying, when he was two years old, his family moved him to Alaska to a log cabin. Now, Mike says, hey, it was a nice log cabin, but the bottom line is it was a log cabin nonetheless. Very rudimentary, no running water. We're talking about your basic outhouse. Stayed there for five years, so I guess set stuff that'll toughen you up, and I'd like to call him Grizzly Cheever, but that line belongs to Steve up in the booth. Got to give him credit. And as Paul Harvey would say, now you know the rest of the story. As C.J. Williams, he takes it right at the middle between center and guard and slams forward for a good 7-8 yards. This guy's been remarkable, has 120 yards rushing in the first half alone against the best rush defense in the nation the last three seasons. He's really impressed me here tonight. He's hitting those holes full speed. He, he's finding the holes and making Brandon... Uh, Sanders make the tackles, and that's why Brandon is that weak safety to make a tackle. You don't want your free safety making a lot of tackles, and he's, he's up trying to make a lot of tackles. And last week, the defensive line was making all the tackles. But a different story tonight. 9 nothing, Georgia Tech. This time, Williams gets a couple, but looks to get the first down. He just needed to get across the 30-yard line. Charlie can't knock him down. But again, a much bigger offensive line is taking advantage of, yes, very quick, but not as big defenders for George Tomey. Well, that's why Brian Sanders is the defensive coordinator, who, of course, just have a new baby girl and want to congratulate him. That's why he smiled yesterday when we said, well, what are you going to do about this defense? And he just smiled and said, you know, you guys will see. We're going to play our, our game. And shown just that, getting another first down. And Georgia Tech leading 9-0 at the 535 mark this first half, C.J. Williams slicing forward. That great body lean is always going forward. Well, what, what they're trying to do is just create a hole anywhere, basically. Uh, when, when they're running to the right side, they just want to push Arizona defensive linemen because they're pinching inside these holes. They're trying to just open up and get creases for them to run. And C.J. is finding those creases, and it's very impressive running. I mean, it's like he's been there all the time. And of course, he just started four games last year and just moved from defensive back, which is incredible. A natural running instinct of a, of a running back. So now on second down and seven yards to go. We'll give it to Williams again, and he started the middle and cut back to the left. Gets about a yard to the 34-yard line, but here is a interesting situation for Georgia Tech at third and six. They've shown draw on occasion on third down and middle range yardage, but they have also used that play action to freeze those linebackers and get the single coverage from the secondary. Well, anytime you have an aggressive team like Arizona who plays that 46, the eagle flex they call it, uh, they're very aggressive up front and they want to really be able to go in and attack. And what you try to do is run draws and screens and things like that because they're so aggressive. And you'll see on third down, you know, they'll probably do something like that to try to get them off well, Donnie Davis sees the middle open with one setback. Only one linebacker is in the middle. And Davis looking over the middle, and there's the sack. This time it'll be covered by Arizona, but I believe Davis's arm was going forward. It should be an incomplete pass. Well, they're calling the sack because the quarterback just tried to throw the ball away, so they're calling it a sack. It actually wasn't a sack, so... It wasn't a fumble. The quarterback was trying to throw it away. But Bruski with his second sack of the year. See, right now, he sees down. He's just trying to throw the ball away, but the referee steps in and call it uh, a sack, and uh, Bruski is the second sack of the year. I mean, Bruski is phenomenal. This guy is only 6 feet 1 inches tall, 240 pounds. He tried to bulk up, play at a bigger level to make it to the next level, and found that he was just slower. But he lost the weight for the Freedom Bowl, and he was all over the field. Yes, they lost to Utah. But Teddy Bruschi was not the reason why he had three and a half sacks in that game. Richard Dice accepts the punt. And once again, Arizona will have very good field position. Teddy Bruschi says it's all right. 
Our next Pac-10 matchup will be this Saturday as the Oregon Ducks take on the fighting Illini of Notre Dame and tune in early for college football today and get up to date on all the scores and highlights from the early games that Saturday night starting at 9.30 on this regional sports network. Kevin Schmidtke gains two on the play. It'll be second down and eight. I mean, Taylor's their speed back. Schmidtke is the guy who has the great north-south ability to squeeze between guard and tackle and gain two, three yards. But Taylor can go the distance. And he's the only man in the backfield. As two receivers will go to the right side, Dice will be the slot man. They go to Rodney Williams. Look at the defense. Rodney gains two, and that's all. That was a quick screen pass. What you want to do is get the ball to the receiver out in the flat as, as quick as you can. So hopefully the other receiver come in and block his man. And he's basically one-on-one -on -one with the receiver, but it didn't work that time because of Georgia Tech. Swarming mean, B defense. Yeah, it's Georgia Tech that came to the desert <laughs> and adopted the desert swarm. That was... Uh, Arizona's moniker. Arizona only one out of six converting third down. Dice wide left. They will send the zone over. The tight end might be open over the middle. He is the only man with single coverage. Instead, they go away to Taylor. Taylor's got the ball on the first down and carries to the 40-yard line. See, that's the thing that, that Arizona wants. They, they had a linebacker number 50 run Rodgers covering covering Gary and you can't put a running or a linebacker on a running back like Gary Taylor you just can't do it and uh, you may have results like this almost every time he's too quick too fast to be covered by a linebacker you have to put a defensive back to play some type of zone on it just a simple flat pattern he goes out about five yards and, and turns out and just catches the ball he has an option probably to go inside or out on that he chose an outside because no one were out there well he stepped out of bounds at the 45 yard line so they mark him back after he's tackled at the 40 Taylor trying the middle. Uh-uh. Who's there? Derek Shepard, Al Jackson. Al Jackson was the guy we highlighted before the game. Big number 99 right there. And also helping on the play with, was Keith Brooking. But Al Jackson just stuffed the center, Manny Ott. Just blew him away and made the tackle. Gain of one, second and nine. You know, Coach told me, Arizona's coach said that Gary gives him a, a different dimension in the backfield because he catches the ball so well. And that's one of the dimensions there. You see, he runs the ball well and he catches the ball well. So it puts a lot of pressure on a defensive linebacker when he has to cover one on one. And he may be in the receiving end of this one. It's second and long again. Right downfield. Incomplete. Harry Taylor at the 15-yard line. He has been the winningest quarterback in the Pacific Ten Conference the last three seasons. And they have sent out some great ones to the NFL like Danny O'Neill and Steve Stenson and Rob Johnson, among others. But Dan White has the best record, 17 wins, only five losses. And Dick Tomey says, we've got a sophomore from Bakersfield, California, we like. But Dan White must play every game for this ball club to be successful. Ooh. Oh, just right in his midsection. Hopefully, we'll hope that he just got the wind knocked out of him. Probably that's basically what it looks like. And the helmet right in the midsection. And if that's the worst thing that happened, that's great there. Because you need that guy in there. He'll be out for a play or so and come back in. Brady Batten is beginning to warm along the sideline. He had surgery on his shoulder at the end of last year, and they are sending Brady in now. Dan White goes to the sideline. He is shaken up. Maybe he has to come out for one play. Is that the rule here? One play, he goes out, and he comes back in because he was laying down hurt. So what happens when you lay down on the field and get hurt? You know, you have to come out for one play. Six of 11 in his career. He had plenty of talent. He was rated the number five quarterback in the nation at Orange Glen High School in Escondido, where he threw for over 7,000 yards in his career. And at one time, early last season, he was actually battling Dan White for the starting quarterback job. But he's coming in cold. Go, 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 go! Benton is sacked to the 45-yard line. Boy, they brought the blitz from the blind side, and Keith Brooking and Nick Ferguson were all over Brady Batten. 
And the reason for that is because they were looking for Gary Taylor in the flat again. But what happened is uh, the, the, the defensive back took them because they had a zone. So the defensive back was able to cover Gary in the flat. That's for the cornerback didn't have anyone to throw to. So he's looking for Gary Taylor there, and he wasn't open. They may be out of quarterbacks by the time this game is over. A, a corner blitz. Charles Miles tried to tackle him. He saw Ferguson out of the corner of his eye. It is fourth down, 20 yards to go with 57 seconds left. Georgia Tech's defense has been flat unbelievable. But their defensive coordinator, Brian Baker, said, I think we have as good a talent as any defense in the Atlantic Coast Conference. The only thing we don't have is experience. Well, coming up at halftime, our college football today show Randy Sabaragi will be bringing you up to date on what happened today in college football and also what to look forward to this coming Saturday on fourth down and 20 a field goal from 43 yards out and a touchdown by CJ Williams that has been the Georgia Tech scoring Arizona, who scored 41 last week in a 41 to 7 win over the University of Pacific. The reason, that, the reason that blitz was able to work because uh, Ferguson was then to the short side of the field and he was on the blind side of the quarterback. The quarterback never saw him and he was on the, the close side of the field, so we, he had a short distance to go to get to him. Well, the shortest distance between two objects is a straight line, and it was a straight line to him. Peyton's punt. Perryman. 20-yard line, he is cut down. Nathan Perryman, who took over for Derek Stiegel, we thought that Stiegel, the loss of Stiegel would be enormous. It hasn't been so far. Well, Perryman has been everywhere. On defense, returning punt. Uh, he's done a great job, and defense for, for Georgia Tech has just done a wonderful job on a high-powered offense of Arizona. And when you look at Arizona last week, I mean, they did great. They did not but Georgia Tech, yes, they're on the rebound. 11-0-1 in 1990 when they won the national championship with Jones at quarterback in a, a great defense, but slipping all the way to 94. That's the worst the national championship the team has done from one year to five years later. A.J. Williams was the intended man and is incomplete. Second down and 10 yards to go with 44 seconds to play. I think uh, Coach O'Leary is saying, Okay, we want to be efficient with our passes, but please, fellas, no mistakes. No, not down here with 44 seconds left to go to halftime. You, you hate to get a back-breaking score down here of any type, whether it be a field goal or, or a touchdown. You want to play really conservative here and try to get a big play if you can't and hold to the ball. They'll run the football to C.J. Williams. And they may just say, let's go to the locker room with no mistakes in a 9-0 lead. Right now, let's go down in the field with Tom Kirkland, an update on quarterback Dan White. Okay, just a quick update. You know, it's been a tough first half physically as well for White. He's okay. He just had the wind knocked out of him. And as you know, Coach Tommy says he's one of the toughest competitors he's ever seen. So he should play, but it's been a rough first half. Well, he has been hit time and again. He's been sacked one time. He's been hit four times after throwing the football. And that was the hit from the big man in the middle, Al Jackson. Jackson just said, hello, my name is Al. I want to put my helmet in your rib cage. <laughs> That's what happened. And the wind that was knocked at him, I don't think he heard the conversation. <laughs> I don't even think he saw him coming, but he hung in there and tried to deliver the football as time has been called with 34 seconds remaining. Arizona is now out of timeouts in the first half. Georgia Tech has one left. It is third down and eight. You know, Dan is a big kid, 6'5", 213 pounds. So that 213 pounds can sometimes take those hits. You know? A little guy like me, it would kill me. You know? well, the taller trees make a louder <laughs> noise when they fall. Tim Burr. Tim Burr. Third down, eight yards to go. Georgia Tech with a nine-point lead. Williams will be stuffed to the 24-yard line. The clock continues to tick away with 25 seconds left 
I think what Arizona wants is just for an opportunity to return a punt. Are they going to get that opportunity by calling timeout? Mikhail Smith is the man who made the tackle, but is that Teddy Bruschi on the field? Yes. And they're looking at his left leg. Uh, the way they're stretching it, it, it appears to be a cramp. You know more about that than I do, Willie. Yeah, it looks like it's a cramp there. It's either a cramp or a tactic to, to get a timeout here. You know, it's 15 seconds, and uh, without that timeout there, um, Georgia Tech could have just run the clock out. So it's either a smart move by a veteran or he really has a cramp. Well, Dick Comey said the two greatest <laughs> leaders in the football team are Teddy oh, Bruschi yeah. and Brandon Sanders. And now, for some reason, he's running much better. A little acting job there, see? He's going for, for the Academy Awards, see? He wasn't nearly as good as you on, uh, what was it, Cryptid Tales? Tales from the Crypt last night on HBO? Man, you were great as a policeman. You're, you're multifaceted. Oh, yeah, well. You have many faucets. <laughs> Only problem, all of them are leaked. <laughs> Fourth down and six yards to go. Steve Fiziak with Willie Gull. And that is the end of our first half here in Tucson, Arizona. George O'Leary is pleased with the first half. But Dick Tomey, he's got plenty to talk about in the locker room. Now let's go to Randy Sparago with college football and today's halftime report. All right, thanks very much, Steve. I want to welcome everybody to our Pac-10 halftime report. I'm Randy Sparagi. Let's get you caught up on what else is going on in college football. One other top 25 game on this Thursday night. We had a big East battle tonight. Boston College taking on 20th ranked Virginia Tech. Eagles trying to bounce back after getting whipped by Ohio State in the kickoff classic. Hokies playing their season over. Some of those Hokie fans had some Hokie haircuts. For this one, BC was up 7-0 in the second quarter when Tech running back Brian Edmonds coughs up the football. Terrence Wiggins collects the freebie and he's heading the other way. Wiggins returns at 57 yards before he's finally run down. That set up an eagle touchdown and they went ahead 14 to nothing, but the Hokies strike back. Off play action, Brian still takes in the pass. Nice move there, breaks it open. He's gonna go. 80 yards for the touchdown. Virginia Tech trailed 14-7 at halftime. Third quarter now, Mark Hartzell with a three yard touchdown pass to Michael Hemmert. Eagles went ahead 20 to seven and they went on to win it. 2014 was the final. Hartzell had three touchdown passes in this game. We got to take a break, but when we come back, we'll talk about Nebraska's chances of winning a second straight national championship. We'll hear from Huskers coach Tom Osborne when the Pac-10 halftime report continues. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pac-10 Halftime Report. The big question in Lincoln, Nebraska these days is can the Cornhuskers repeat as national champions? Well, Coach Tom Osborne is not known for going out on a limb on such subjects. But when Nebraska's native son said that playing in anything but the Fiesta Bowl would be anticlimactic, ears across the Plain states perked up. Can the Huskers become the first team in nearly two decades to repeat? Well, one week into the season and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State are ready to cast their vote for number one. Their biggest concern was their biggest burden. Who would protect Tommy Frazier and open up the holes for the nation's best running attack? Question answered. Nebraska doesn't drop down. When they lose four of their five offensive linemen, they go back to the pipeline. Last season's group tipped the scales at 295 per man and gave up just six sacks and four holding penalties all year. The new line averages a svelte 290 and by early indications is as stingy. The only other team with a quarterback combo better than Nebraska's might be Florida's front and gun. The no duo is more ridiculously unsettling than Frazier and Brooke Behringer. One's a true option back. The other has an NFL arm. And Osborne isn't afraid to use either. Change them up and Nebraska has two completely different looks. Running options. We feel that quarterback is very much like eye back. If you only got one, uh, it's a real problem because you feel really limited in what you're going to do. And uh, so we're, I'm very pleased to have two guys of that talent. Besides quarterback, Nebraska goes too deep in just about every other spot. The backfield, however, goes four to five in the hole. All battle-tested eye backs, captained by Heisman candidate Lawrence Phillips. Our defense last year was made up of uh, 
you know, no first round draft choices. And, and so they, uh, I think the biggest thing that I'll remember about that defense is how they played together. And the standard was set. Defensively, the Huskers are coming off one of their best seasons ever. And even with six starters gone and gaps at linebacker, the Black Sharps are still too fast and too talented. The biggest obstacle outside of Boulder the Huskers might face is battling with the moniker of national champs. They vowed not to spend too much time celebrating last year's title, but they forget to play this year, a la Alabama in 93. When Queen James began, that's when everyone dropped the attitude that we're national champions, and we had, took on the attitude that we weren't. Because we know, that's all, we know that's the only way we're going to be able to be successful this year is go out and pretend that we never won it like we, and, and play the best that we can. The Huskers certainly have the horses to win another national championship. Those horses just have to stay on the track. we got to pay some bills, but when we come back, we'll get you caught up on the night in baseball. Stay with us, folks. The Pac-10 Halftime Report continues. Arizona Stadium where the home team Wildcats find themselves trailing by nine to Georgia Tech. Steve Fiziak along with Willie Gold in what has been a surprising first half. I mean, this is the first time Arizona's been shut out since 1993. UCLA did at that time. We're talking the Desert Swarm defense, one of the most respected defenses in the country. How is C.J. Williams running wild for 130? Well, what they're trying to do is, is pinch inside, and what Georgia Tech has done a great job is, is creating holes for, C, for CJ, and CJ is just finding open holes and, and running for big yards because he's a They're a big, big play, but Arizona just wasn't able to take advantage of it. And this game could be 13-0 if CJ Williams' first touchdown was not called back. And here it is, first quarter. Well, as you can see, they open up a hole for him. He just attacks that line, goes there, and just jumps, leaps for the, for the touchdown, touchdown, but it gets called back for holding. Big mistake by Georgia Tech. But when he had the chance, second quarter, they swept right again, and here's C.J. He just turns his head up north and south, runs over the, the linebacker, and just goes in for the score. That white line is touchdown. 130 yards rushing already for C.J. Williams. They have 138 to Arizona's nine. Incredible. I mean, what has happened? No turnovers for either ball club. Georgia Tech has just outplayed Arizona on both ends of the football, both offensively and defensively. What must they do in the second half? Well, offensively, uh, Arizona has to get something going as far as mixing it up and everything else. Georgia Tech has to keep doing what they're doing but not make as many mistakes. But Arizona must run the football. Only eight yards in the first half. We'll come back and Tom Kirkland will talk with Nick Tomey as Tech has a nine-point lead. Georgia Tech, a 14-point underdog, has a nine-point lead here to start the second half, and they will get the ball first. Everybody shaking their keys, the keys to victory. Block and tackle for Arizona, something they did not do well in the first half. The return from the goal line, C.J. Williams, cut down the 14-yard line. That's a start for Arizona. As they came out at the halftime break, Tom Kirkland visited with Dick Tomey. All right, Coach, you haven't given up a 100-yard rusher in the last 35 games. Already C.J. Williams with 130 in the first half. What would you tell them in there? Well, we're getting whipped. Their defensive line's whipping our offensive line, and, and their offensive line's whipping our defensive line. When that happens, football's hard to win. And so we just got to turn that around this, this, uh, this half. But the, they've come off the ball, they've blocked us, and, and we haven't been able to block them, so that makes it a long day. Is this about effort at all? I know you weren't pleased the first week. I don't think it's about effort. I think they're just more physical than we are right now. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, fellas, back up to you. And on first down, Georgia Tech does what they did so well in the first half, run the football as they run off the right side. This time Arizona's there as Mike Sloco making the start in the second half. First half possessions, Georgia Tech. Got a field goal, their first try, and a touchdown, their third. After that, Arizona was a little more successful. But the Wildcats offensively got nothing. They missed two field goals, one from 51, one from 52. On second down and seven. The option, C.J. Williams. No! Charlie Camp was there. Mike Sloco was there. 
So was Brandon Sanders. Well, I think Desert Storm is back after halftime. The pursuit is there, everyone is there, and that's what you have to do with this option. You've got to have a lot of people out there, a lot of bodies. I think that I would have loved, loved to have been a fly on the wall in that locker room of Arizona at halftime. Well, I find it interesting that he starts Sloco in the second half, but apparently he believes that they need to get tough at middle linebacker. And Sloco, the sophomore from Phoenix, is out there and hammering, making two tackles on two of the first three plays. Listen to this crowd. First down, what a catch. Harvey Middleton. Great throw and great catch. That what, that's what you can do with a, with a quarterback that has the ability to run outside and get outside. He gets outside and he's able to throw the ball, put a tremendous amount of pressure, get out of the middle where all those defensive linemen are, get outside and throw the ball on the run. That's a very difficult pass to throw and catch. Yeah, that, that, you have to be a great quarterback to be able to throw it like he did. And Donnie Davis much better than Dan White in the first half. Five of eight, 37 yards, but no mistakes. From the 26-yard line. C.J. Williams punished again by Joe Salavea and Teddy Bruschi. Well, Teddy Bruschi, who left the final play of the first half limping off the field, apparently healthy again. Just wasn't anything there. I mean, linebackers there, 56, elevators there. I mean, everybody's there just plugging up those holes. And that's what that defense is designed to do is pinch in and not have any holes there, not like the first quarter. Gain of two, second and eight. They'll run CJ again, and he's stuck again. Bruski from the outside. The middlemen were both Osborne and Salavea. Boy, he is a fiery, emotional leader. Tremendous motor is what his coach Dick, Dick Tomey says. He plays two positions, the stud defensive end and the whip linebacker. Why do they do that with him? I just love that name, stud defensive end. That's a great name. No matter what they do, it's a stud defensive end, you know? Well, I think he wanted to work on his ability to be able to go back and forth and be able to go from sideline to sideline on that defensive tackle line. As Lawrence Taylor was saying, he comes at him like a bunch of crazed dogs. <laughs> They got a play like it to come back on Georgia Tech. Plenty of time. The throw. But it was the pressure from Chuck Osborne in the middle. Defensive tackle coming in. He's a senior from Canyon City, California. And you, you, you credit that high pass to Chuck Osborne. He's coming in and just hammers the quarterback as he delivers the ball. The quarterback sees that. He knows he's going to get hit, so the ball's a little bit higher than it would have normally been. It would have been a completion for the first, first down if, if Osborne hadn't come in and put that pressure on him. So a great defensive stand by the defense. Now the offense must do their job as Keith Weaver will punt it to Richard Dice, who stands at his 32-yard line. Time for a big play for Dice, man. He has to roll the dice again. Ooh, and a bad punt by Weaver. And it goes out of bounds. And once again, Arizona will start their offense with marvelous field position. When we come back, it's Georgia Tech 9, Arizona nothing. Let's go on right now. You hear this. Arizona's defense playing like Desert Swarm on Georgia Tech's first possession. Now their offense will take over, and they need to get things going. Donnie Davis had no time to throw, and Chuck Osborne really thrilled into the curve as he threw the football. Arizona's first half, they missed two field goals in their first two possessions. Now look at that. Three plays, six plays, three plays, six plays, and punt that football. Dan White, who struggled in the first half, comes out. And will run Gary Taylor. And Gary Taylor slides past midfield for a two, maybe three-yard gain. Steve, I think this might be a good time to bear down, you know? They're going straight up to that Georgia Tech defense. And that's what they have to do, go straight up to the defense. Steve, it's a good time to bear down, don't you think? What, what is that bear down? That bear down is... It signifies a gentleman by the name of... Uh, John Button Salmon, nearly 70 years ago, he was a student body president, played football and baseball, and he was in a terrible car accident. The coach went in and said, John, what do you think? And he said, tell the guys to bear down. 
did. They won the football game, and that is exactly what Arizona needs to step up and do. Richard Dice makes a catch for a short game. But that logo, Bear Down, has been with them nearly 70 years. 1926. That, that's a very difficult pass when you're playing in the zone because you, you really don't give yourself a, enough room to really make anything happen because there's always going to be a guy in the flat. And what he had a two receiver on the top on the left side and, and Dice just went down in the, in, in the flat and another guy went deep and curled up and when you throw it there you got a guy who's right there able to make the tackle. Well once again Arizona facing another third down five situation. Very rarely in this game have they been third and two, third and one. It is the third and two minutes. From the shotgun, they'll throw again. White looking for an open. Mixler. Rather Mike Lucky, the backup tight end, the redshirt freshman from Antioch, California with a first down catch. And that is his first grab this year. That's his first career catch. That was a that was an excellent job because he, he beat Nate Nathan Perriman, who was a defensive back, of course. And uh, anytime you got a tight end on DB, you expect the DB to win that. But that time he beat Perriman and across the field on just a, we call it a sneak pattern where the tight end just goes across the field by four or five yards and try to get, get the touch. Well, they feel he's got a great future. Remember, they had injuries to both Damon Carroll and Tim Thomas at tight end. So, really, Metzler's their third tight end and lucky for fourth. They didn't expect him to see this much action so quickly. Taylor. 1st Georgia Tech couldn't afford to make the mistakes that they made. They needed all the points they could because this is a very high-powered offense. And when Gary Taylor gets going north and south and get in that backfield and able to make some plays, he's going to make some people miss and make some big runs just like this one, running and catching the ball. 16-yard run by Gary Taylor to the 13-yard line. Check inside nine and a half to play third quarter. Pro set in the backfield. Miles over the middle, a gain of three yards to the ten, where he was knocked down by Gary Joseph, a uh, sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. You know, you don't say Dan White is a great athlete, but uh, that play, he was stepped on by one of his linemen. He was strong enough to be able to pick up his feet and get the ball down downfield to Miles, who made a really a nice game here and, and got him in, on the 10-yard line. Well, he talked about his athleticism. He said, I'm the college co-star. I'm uh, <laughs> slow with an awkward delivery. He looks a little bit better than co-star. <laughs> All I can tell you is he's 17 and 5 as he started. Schmidt back in the game in a short gain of one yard to the nine. So once again, it is third down and five yards to go for Arizona. Well, all he does is win, and that's the bottom line in college football or any other football is that you want to win games. And anytime you can win more, many more than you lose, it's a good, good situation. All right, Willie, it is third down and five. Dick Comey is a big play guy in Richard Dice. Are you going at number 17? I'm going at number 17 in that little pass where he throws it up in the end zone and let Dice go up and jump it like he's last week. He had a big catch for a touchdown. He had an 89-yard score for a touchdown. Now he will send Dice in motion. Ooh, and flags were flying, and they stopped the play. Georgia Tech was in the zone there, so... No play, timeout, Arizona. Arizona called timeout prior to the snap. Look as if they were going to try to get Dice to go across the field. Uh, Georgia Tech will play a zone there, so if, if they play if they play in a zone, it wouldn't have been a great play for, for Dice. It might have been someone else. Here we are, third and five. They can't make a mistake here. You can't have a guy going in motion and he's supposed to be on the left side instead of the right. And whoever called the timeout, and I don't believe it was Dan White. Yeah. Well, he looked a little bit uh, amazed that the timeout was called. And down here, with a team like Arizona, who's a real experienced quarterback like that, those things shouldn't happen. And George O'Leary, he may have thought the timeout should not have been called. He was a guy who was Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator from 87 to 91. He replaced Bill Lewis. They did lose their last three games, but they won their opener last week. Right now, we've got time on the field. Let's go down to Tom Kirkland. All right.
right, guys, you know Dan White bounced back from some big hits in the first half. Here's a guy who started his career at Penn State, where his dad went. But early in his career there, he heard from uh, Joe Paterno, hey, you're behind Kerry Collins. You're not going to probably start here until your senior year. So he took a leap of faith. He believed in Dick Tomey getting away from the option run offense here. Tomey told him, come here. We will throw the ball. All of a sudden, Dan White is the quarterback here, 17-5 and five as a starter. But he's got a little bit of work to do here to get number 18. And he is down by nine points. Will it be 16 to 17? His drive started on their 49. could have been no one else with, with the completion. Willie, should the wide receiver have been in that area? <laughs> Probably shouldn't have, but he's only with Metzler. <laughs> Metzler with his second touchdown this year, and it is now 9-7 to seven as Arizona has cut the Georgia Tech lead to two. Responsibility is on them to put together a drive. 51 yard drive, 335 to play. And Dan White throws his fifth touchdown this year. He has been picked one time. And it was last week against Pacific. Now it is Donnie Davis's turn to try and engineer a drive against the desert swarm defense that was very impressive on their open, opening effort here in the second half. I tell you what, if I was Georgia Tech, I'm not sure if I would have my starting running back returning kickoff. I mean, after what he's done tonight, they better find another kickoff return. Well, they need big plays. Baker asking him to do a lot. And CJ cut down. What a play by Van Tuene. Now Van Tuene just broke through and just made the tackle no unblocked almost. That five points, points is looking bigger and bigger every time now. As you see, Van Tuene just beats his blocker, goes through it, and makes the tackle for no gain. A he loss may be Arizona's loss. next Teddy Bruce. Absolutely. That five points is looking even bigger and bigger now. I mean, you know, when you, when you give up points on a team like Arizona, it really hurts you. What Willie's talking about is that touchdown that was called back and it resulted in three points to field goal. Donnie Davis throwing the pass. It is complete and up near a first down is Harvey Middleton again. He was the guy who had the responsibility of taking over for the injured star receiver Derek Stiegel. And Middleton was a guy who only played his last two years of high school football in Jamestown, South Carolina. And even though he only played those two seasons, he wound up being one of the top two wide receivers in the state. Yeah, and, uh, he had a great year last year. He had 18 catches for an 11-yard average. Well, that's the type of play that you can run with a quarterback uh, like Johnny Davis. He can stretch that defense out there so you can't put that much pressure inside. Here we go again. Third and two. Just a bad read by, by the quarterback there. He had a man wide open in the middle of the field and didn't see it. Number 45, Charlie Kemp, just came up and really not knocked him. <laughs> but it was just a bad read by the quarterback. And that's what that's what Coach O'Leary was talking about reading. He had a man wide open in the middle of the field for the first down. And he looked for the, for the flat pattern. So Weaver comes on again. He's averaged 37. 
He had a long of 50, but his last one was a terrible one. It went out of bounds to the 49. If he doesn't get a good point off here, don't be uh, amazed to see Rodney Williams. Takes a backward bounce, and Arizona will have it at their own 34-yard line. Arizona with a chance to take the lead, down by two to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. It's a Pac-10 game of the week on Prime Sports. Georgia Tech by two over Arizona. And all year long, we will bring you the Burger King fans' top ten poll. Stop in your local Burger King restaurants to find out how you can cast your vote for number one. All proceeds will benefit Burger King's scholarship program. Check Monday's USA Today or Sports Illustrated each week to find out who's number one or watch the Pac-10 game of the week on Prime Sports. Arizona football, Richard Dice with the catch. Short gain in the play as he's covered up nicely by Ryan Stewart. Again, they compare him in there. He's a wide side cornerback, and they're just trying to get, get the ball to uh, dice any way they can. And the flat impairment was there to make, make the tackle. Just basically a zone defense. Anytime you have a zone defense, it's, it's going to be very difficult to get a big, big play out of that. But five yards on first down is a great, great play. You know, second and five, that's, that's the type of dime that you want to be in second and five and under. And this will help out the running game. They've got Kevin Schmidtke in the game, who is their attack the line as quickly as possible kind of back. And he gets it and attacks it, and he stops but breaks free for a two-yard gain to the 42-yard line. The Arizona's spreading out their offense to try to uh, loosen up the Georgia Tech defense. Once they do that, they'll, they'll get an end to be able to walk out. That way you won't have as many linemen, down linemen. And they're splitting the tight end out, splitting the two receivers out wide to try to open up that uh, defensive front Georgia Tech. It was closed in the first half. Arizona's offensive line opened it up to start this third quarter, and they gave Dan White protection he did not have in the first half. Remember, this offensive line is entirely new from a year ago. And wishes will all play. Next week, Arizona will take on Illinois on September 16th. Then they will battle Southern Cal. Georgia Tech is at Virginia, and that is going to be a tough one. But the way Tech is playing, I believe it is going to be competitive. I mean, it would appear that everybody, with the exception of Florida State, is quite even in that league. And it is a very good Atlantic Coast Conference this year. But Florida State, I mean, with Danny Cannell and Warwick Dunn, they are the number one team in college football. Virginia was the number two choice by many fans and by the coaches and players in the ACC to finish right behind the Seminoles. And in the Pacific 10 Conference, of course, everybody's pick was USC. USC, then UCLA. And then after that, the Arizonans, the Washingtons. Arizona won last week, 41 to seven over Pacific, while Georgia Tech is beating Furman 51 to 7. Arizona's wasted two timeouts early here in the third quarter. I mean, four minutes to go in the third quarter, 450, and another goal for it. If you call two timeouts already, I'm sure those two may won't be, uh, won't be uh, too happy with that. Inside five minutes to play in the third quarter. Dice going in motion. White fumbles the football, and a third three you got the timeout you waste that and now you've got to punt the football yeah it wasn't, wasn't really a good series after that first series you expect them to do a little bit better but you know dan actually really when you look at it could have picked that ball up and still been able to make the play he had enough time i, I think georgia tech has been in so much all day really putting that pressure on him. he might have thought that they were there but he had enough time to really pick up the ball and maybe be able to still make a play and those are the type of plays you expect out of a senior quarterback so Peyton called on he will take it to perryman Return. Got the oh. And good contain coming from Arizona's big number 58, Scott Sanders, who had a big interception last week and has played five special teams play tonight. Let's go down to the field. Join Tom Kirkland. 
All right, you know, Larry McDuff, the architect of Arizona's double eagle flex defense, just followed his key defensive players together, Van Tuane and Penny Bruschi and company, and said, hey, look out for Tech's play fake coming up. He says they haven't done it yet in the second half. He told Tuane, the backside whip, to keep his eyes on the quarterback. He expects Tech to do some kind of a play fake sprint pass option. He also just ran by and said, hey, watch out for the reverse alert. Reverse alert. They haven't done that yet either. So well, here's Davis. He's got room to run. He'll throw it instead, and it's incomplete. And I thought he had about five, six yards if he runs the ball with it. Yeah, he did. He had a receiver wide open down the field, too, and it had been a first down and really about a 15-yard gain, so he tried to put it in there, but just, just threw the ball high. He didn't set his feet that time. But what, what happens when you have a quarterback that can get outside, there was only one lineman out there to challenge him, and therefore you can do many more things creatively. But the key is to getting out there and setting up a little bit and trying to, trying to throw it on the run, but setting your feet on the run. Solid numbers, not quite as strong as last week when he completed all six of his passes for 125 yards. On second down, he'll throw it again. Catch made, Cedric Zachary, and Zachary's got the first down and more to the 45-yard line where he's running about by Rishi Johnson. Rishi is starting this year because the expected starter, Derek Stewart, was kicked off the team because of violating team policies. Yeah, but Ray Shee can't play 10, 12 yards off the receiver. They'll do it every time. I mean, if you play 10 to 12 yards off the receiver and it's second and 10, you throw the ball five yards, you got another five yards to run for first down. But it's a penalty here. So bring it back. Another big mistake by Georgia Tech. George O'Leary, who saw Fortune look his way in the first half, suddenly is finding it, turning the direction towards Arizona. Now, instead of a first and 10 at the Arizona 45, they are all the way back inside their own 25-yard line. Those types of penalties kill you. I mean, you have first down on the past the 50-yard line in Arizona's territory, and now the second, second down, and you're way back in 21-yard line. Those types of penalties kill you. In a close playing like this, you can't have those types of penalties. Second down, 28 yards to go. This is when that front four will be pinning their ears back and coming, and Davis falls down. So it'll be third and 30. Now I think this is where you see the experience of a team like Arizona. I mean, they're, they're down by just a couple points, and uh, Georgia Tech is trying to make a big play. He gets steps on by his lineman. Just, just one thing, bad things happen after another, and you just can't have that. In this situation in the first half, really, they ran the football. George O'Leary was saying, don't make a mistake. The back of an all area. And will they go deep? I, I just think they're trying to get the ball out so they can punt the ball and put the uh, Arizona in deep position. They're going to run the ball to Charles Wiley, and Wiley is hogtied at the 22-yard line by Van Tuane, who has been in uh, too many plays in the second half for Georgia Tech. They were able to start down in 10 miles, so you just trying to get good field position and kick the ball off and hopefully put Arizona deep in their territory. Weaver comes on again. His third straight punt to open the second half. Two minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Richard Dice stands at his 35. This game looking mysteriously a bit like last year. Oh, they almost blocked the punt. I mean, they were right there for it, and they flat missed it. Oh. That punt should have been blocked for all practical purposes. Mikhail Smith, the true freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee, I thought he had it, Willie. Oh, he was there, no problem. He should have made the tackle. He didn't look the ball all the way through, and he was right there and just missed the ball. He <laughs> almost grabbed his leg. I mean, the ball was, he was right there, untouched. As you can see, he's coming through and just, just misses the ball, actually. He tried to swipe at the ball. He didn't go for the, where the ball was going to go. He went for where the ball was at the point. It's been a big play for Arizona. I mean, that, that could have been a touchdown. Well, he immediately went right over Coach Tomey. Got his talking to, and then we'll go sit down. But he comes from a, a coaching family. Schmitke is torn down, loses three in the play. Good defensive effort by Georgia Tech. Ron Rogers. Well, that's one thing Schmitke, he, he can't do is run north and south. I mean, east and west like that. You want Gary Taylor to be able to run those types of plays, even though he's done well with it sometimes. But you want him, that type of guy, to run straight up field, try to get as much as he can north and south. So it's a passing down again for Arizona. They face a second down and 13. Georgia Tech leading by 2-9-7. We're inside two minutes to play, third quarter. Dan White led his 
Packers team on a touchdown drive, his last possession. the interception he suffered last week was the most embarrassing pass he's thrown in his career. Well, he may have to change that. I think so. That was right to the and enemy. The pressure, see number 35, he goes up and goes in the pressure and the corner's coming on the side so Dan had to get rid of it. <laughs> Dan Stewart is just there to pick it. He knows he, because it's a blitz. He knows he has to get rid of the ball really fast. So in a quick situation like that, you know you have to throw the ball in the flat or in, in, in the flat really fast so he's up, able to make that interception and go all the way. Ryan Stewart shined against Arizona last year with 11 tackles. Pass broken up and a fumble recovery. And he is shining tonight with a 40-yard interception return. And Georgia Tech is back in front, 16-7. What a stunning game this has been as Arizona, their offense, unable to move their defense, is beginning to strengthen themselves. Dan White now on the phone with his offensive coordinator, Wayne Aquino. The, the, the pressure that Georgia Tech puts on, you got two people blitz, you got a corner blitz and a linebacker blitz. You have to throw the ball hot, which is really fast. The defensive back knows that, so he plays the receiver really close, comes up, steps in front of it, makes a great move there. Like a running back, C.J. Williams there, another defensive back, so you're in the touchdown. Is that a time, though, really, where you have to throw the ball away? He's well, taking a chance. Well, you know, Coach, Coach Tomey just told us earlier, yesterday, that uh, you have to, he has to put the pressure on, on Dan to be able to read those hot situations. That was a hot situation. The quarterback has to know which side he has to go on. He might have had the receiver open on the other side. you got to know which side you have to go on and be able to read that. Harry Taylor from his six-yard line. An opening down the left sideline. And now he's tackled at the 31-yard line, and Dan White will have to come out after throwing an interception that was returned for 40 yards and a touchdown by Ryan Stewart. Georgia Tech leading by nine with a minute 35 to play here in the third quarter. Eleven of twenty-one. And in the first half, he was about 40%. He upgraded that performance second half until the last pass. Yeah, the big number is that one interception, but it's one interception would have been okay, but it went for a touchdown. They'll run it. Not much there is Charles Miles gaining maybe two yards. Ron Rogers, who has been on close to double figures tackles in this game, makes another one. What a boost for that already swarming Georgia Tech defense. I mean, they've been really swarming all night. It came out in the second half, and Arizona took it to them, but... What a big boost to have an interception for a touchdown. That gets the entire team up, both offensively and defense. The defense want to come in and do well and want to show off for the offense, you know? Well, this was a defense that came in with a great deal of inexperience, not much confidence, but they are beginning to believe in themselves after this showcase against Arizona. Gary Taylor. He had room for a moment, decided to cut in right where the traffic was and gains nothing. Ron Rogers again. Again, that's a continuation play of that big, big uh, interception. I mean, the defense now, they're, they're really pumped up. They're shooting those gaps and everyone's hustling. And, you know, we, we talked earlier about uh, Brian, Brian Baker, the defensive coordinator, who's only 33 years old. He said he had a great line. He said, I want a roll call on the ball. That means he wants all 11 men on the ball. I, I love that call. A roll call on the ball. Brian Rogers is the ball and roll. White back to throw. They got him from behind, and that may be holding against the offense. Jermaine Miles had his man, but I believe Ian McCutcheon was grabbing Miles and holding him back. It will be against the offense. That was just a great individual effort by Miles. I mean, he was getting hold and getting blocked at the same time. And he just reaches in and grabs that jersey of, of, of Dan White. Just a great individual effort. He getting hold there and getting blocked. But yet he was able to persevere and grab the quarterback jersey and make it, get that sack. Jermaine Miles, one of two guys they got from Nassau Community College, Al Jackson's the other one. 
The National Community College must have had a great defense because Jackson and Miles here in the NCAA Division I level have been flat outstanding. Well, Miles, he's from Brooklyn, New York. He's been a long way going out of Georgia Tech. And as I said, he's a junior, but Georgia Tech is loaded with red shirt people playing on the team and a lot of experience. Perryman. That is the end of the third quarter with Georgia Tech. A 14-point underdog to Dick Tomey. Wildcats coming into this game, leading 16-7 as we go to the final 15 minutes. Ten football on Prime Sports. It is the Pac-10 game of the week, and Georgia Tech with a 16-7 lead. Here is the punt from Matt Payton. Georgia Tech will have it offensively to start the fourth period. Perryman calling for the fair catch, and he makes it to the 40-yard line. After three quarters, Arizona starting well coming out after the halftime when they were down nine nothing, and Metzler caught a nine-yard touchdown that made it nine seven. And this crowd was elected but Stewart picks up a pass and goes 40 yards for a touchdown Williams with 130 yards rushing the first half minus two in the second total yards Georgia Tech has the lead there and a nine-point lead on the scoreboard will it go at Arizona Stadium in Tucson Johnny Davis to throw Middleton with the catch Think he's got the first down. Yes, he does at the 48-yard line. And what Arizona wants to do now is just try to take some of the bite out of the Arizona defense by, by rolling out and throwing the ball on the run, which you can do that with a quarterback, as I said, of, of Johnny Davis. He rolls out and he was able to set his feet that time and make a good throw and get a first down. There aren't too many teams in the Pac-10 conference outside Oregon State who have that sprint out throw. Arizona has had their defense stretched out by Donnie Davis tonight. He has really played well. Chris Meyer is a tight end who will go in motion. Actually, he's eight back. They give it to C.J. Williams for a short gain to the 45-yard line. Gain of three. It will be second down and seven as the tackle is made by Chuck Rich. Back up defensive back. Well, I think if you, as you see many of the Pac-10 team, teams watch these films, they're going to be able to see what Donnie's able to do with this defense who they've had problems with in, in the past couple of years. And, They'll be able to know that if they can roll out and be able to throw, throw passes, you know, 10, 12 yards, they'll be able to really attack this defense in that way. Inside 14 minutes to go. Georgia Tech with a nine-point lead. Davis back to the air. Middleton catches again and gains the first down. At the 37-yard line, Rasheed Johnson. And really, what's happening also is they know they're, that Arizona's not playing much zone. It's strictly man, so if you can beat your one man, they well, marching down the field. Well, the eagle flex, again, is like the 46, and it's, like, it's, it's based on pressure. And when the defensive back is playing off 8, 9, 10 yards, that little five-yard pattern is going to be there every every time. And, and Dunny has thrown that pass very well, very easy to catch. There's no problem whatsoever. fell down and I think he was tripped up by his own offensive lineman. Well, I've noticed that's happened at least three or four times and Davis was able to keep his feet uh, several times but this time it, he wasn't able to do that. That's just a problem between either the guard pulling or, or the center stepping back to block. And that's something that they'll watch film and really cor correct that. It was the backup offensive guard Michael Minter who stepped on his foot tripping him. Georgia Tech leading by nine. Uh, Ramblin' Rec cheerleaders have been fired up all evening long. They came in 14-point underdog, but look at that score. C.J. Williams! Look at this run! Oh. Nearing 150 yards on the night. He had 151 last week. 
just just a wonderful run great effort he gets the ball he goes he's going to the left it's just a simple draw and a draw play is, is allows the runner to go any way he can it goes to daylight and what the uh, georgia tech offensive line want to do is just push his men push them in anywhere they want to go to give the lane for the running back and cj is up there around 150 yards and sure that's it. he's happy with that that's uh arizona is dead last last year in interception with just four remarkable for a team that forces so many turnovers and they have not forced a turnover tonight no fumbles by georgia tech no interceptions few mistakes Rashi johnson ran for 206 yards last year or rather cj williams ran for 206 yards last year against wake forest look at the guys in front of him eddie lee ivory went for 356 one well, game and jimmy lincoln and brent cunningham and jerry mays but cj williams with 151 yards rushing last week nearing 150 he's got 1151 to work with he could break his old record not bad company to be with him this time not much there is jimmy sprott mike sloco in on the hit just a simple swing plan. They try to get the ball to CJ any way they can and just swing him out. And hopefully if Lyman's supposed to be in front of him to give him a block, if they could have gotten a block on Spout, it would have really been a big play. Might have gone for a touchdown. Arizona can't believe what is happening here tonight. But then again, last year they couldn't believe. The number one team in the nation is ranked by Sports Illustrated. Almost was shot by this Georgia Tech team. And Arizona survives, scoring a touchdown in the last 30 seconds of the game. Johnny Davis sneaking forward on a blown play. So when you look at the, the players on Georgia Tech's team, you know, they come from all over the country, you know, Florida, New York, and everything else. And I think that's a big credit to Georgia Tech's organization to be able to get kids to come down to Georgia Tech and get the players. That team was, you know, one in ten last year and not done very well the year before. But they were the national champions in 1990, so you knew they were bringing in quality talent. They had changed coaches from Bobby Ross, who won the national championship, and now is with the San Diego Chargers. He took them to the Super Bowl last year. David Frakes from 37 yards out to attempt the field goal, and it is on the way, and it is good. It is now a two-touchdown game that Arizona must deal with to win this game. 19 to 7, Georgia Tech in our Pac-10 Conference Game of the Week on Prime Sports. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the University of Arizona and the Pacific 10 Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the University of Arizona and the Pac-10 Conference. Steve Fiziak, Willie Gall, at Arizona Stadium where the Wildcats are being stunned by Georgia Tech, the number 17 team in the nation. Getting beaten by a team that went one and ten last year but a new coach a new attitude a new enthusiasm and the special team play has been excellent and another, another example that roll call the ball you had 10 guys around the football the time the only person that wasn't around the football was the kicker you don't really expect him around them. Their defense has been able to solve the passing game of Dan White in Arizona. And that was one of the reasons why George O'Leary wanted to go back to the running game. He said, if you put all your eggs on the quarterback, you better have a great defense because that defense is going to be on the field a lot. They put together a ball control option offense, which has kept their defense on the sideline a lot tonight. Hit as he throws, and then a flag goes down. Probably a holding call. Deshaun Simmons was the man who hit Dan White from the backside. It is holding against the offense. The pocket there just collapsed. I mean, Georgia Tech is doing a wonderful job of just really putting their nose back and going through. They just... As you can see here, there's a pocket there and it just collapsed. Number 94 is pushing him and everybody's just pushing in there After trying to get, get their quarterback. The look, number 68 is getting in and everybody's getting in. They got linebacker who got responsible with gaps. The defensive linemen are in there. 
So the Tech has been very, very impressive tonight. And Deshaun Simmons, who was being held, was the man who made the hit. <laughs> Most time when they get held, they do a great job. Well, it is now first down, 23 yards to go. They throw wide to Gary Taylor, and there's nothing there. They have suffocated that play. Well, again, that's a hot read by the quarterback. There was a corner blitz. Number 40, uh, Nicholas Ferguson, was just bl blitzing in. So the quarterback has to throw the ball hot, and that's a hot receiver. As you can see, the cornerback came in. That's a hot receiver, so there's nothing he can do. That's his read. He has to do that. No game. Second down, 23 yards to go. But this is not the position that Arizona wants to be in. They got four receivers out there. This is not their type of ball game. They're, they're more of a control ball game. They want to run it as much as they pass it. But now they're in a situation where they're trying to pass it more. Defense is rolling over to zone and double cover Richard Dice, and Arizona will run it with 9.20 to go, and the crowd will boo on this play call. They're thinking Bach is our enemy. It's firing downfield. Arizona's defense has done their job. They gave up just one touchdown. The only other touchdown scored by Georgia Tech came on the 40-yard interception return by Ryan Stewart. After a gain of four, it's third down and 19. Inside nine minutes to play, and it is 19-7, Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech has just confused this offense of Arizona tonight. They haven't really been able to do anything they want to do. And now they call the last timeout. What, you know, what a big mistake. It's been one of those kind of evenings for Arizona, but they still have time. 8.42 to go, down by 12. surprising score here on our Pac-10 game of the week and we'll be back with you this coming Saturday when Illinois goes against Oregon. Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 on the West Coast, the Pac-10 Conference game of the week. Our pals Rodney Gilmore and Barry Tompkins will be there to bring it for you. Rick Simeon Rice of the Fighting Illini will be in Eugene, Oregon on Saturday at 7. Dan White on third down and 19. Fires it short. Fourth down, cutting situation. What well, Arizona tried to do with uh, Georgia Tech has been very successful of just running, running the quarterback out of the pocket to, to take some of the aggressiveness out of the linemen and uh, weren't, just weren't able to get the job done. Really with what Northwestern did to Notre Dame, what Virginia almost did to Michigan earlier this year, you better come ready to play. And Dick Tomey said he thought his team played substandard emotional football last week. And I don't think he can be pleased with the way they have played tonight no, at any, all. Anytime you have a big win like they did last week, you know, it could be a letdown in Georgia Tech, you know, 1-10 last week. Hey, they're going for it. Oh, no, Matt Payton punched it with his left foot and gets it down to the 45-yard line. <laughs> Apparently, it was kind of a read. If you got it, Matt, all right. go for it. But if you don't, punt it with your left foot. Yeah, well, it was uh, a different play. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Tech will get it back and tune in after the game for all the latest scores and highlights on PressBox on your regional sports network check your local listing Georgia Tech a 14 point underdog they are the team that has been bearing down in this affair Harvey Middleton going wide left They're definitely making the people back in Atlanta really proud no question C.J. Williams, boy, he is ridden down at the 50-yard line, will lose a yard in the play as Mikhail Smith from Knoxville, Tennessee, makes the tackle. He's a true freshman. They think his future is outstanding. He might be the next Brandon Sanders. Father, Lovey Smith, coach at Ohio State, and 277 yards rushing last year against Georgia Tech. Tonight, 19. 20 and 161 for Tech. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> this ball club was 1 and 10 last year, but they did lose five games by 10 points or less. Downey Davis on the sprint out will keep it and run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. You know, Steve, I had a wonderful opportunity to go out and work out this morning at the uh, University of Arizona. Beautiful campus. You know, the track is wonderful. 
had an opportunity to go in the weight room and lift with some of the tennis players and you know, basketball players and the students here are really, really excited about this year. We've got students from everywhere around the country, from Poland, from you know, all over the country. That's a big, I think it's a big attribute to, to the students to be able to come here. The weather's wonderful and the coaching staff has done a wonderful job and it really, when you think about Arizona, you think about all the hot weather, but they really improved well and, and got people from all over the country here. So it's a great, great tribute to the coach and the coaching staff. We've got 35,000 students here. And the National Science Foundation ranks Arizona among the top 15 public universities. They have a proud football tradition, a great basketball tradition. And here is 738. Times are mighty anxious for the Wildcats of Tucson, Arizona. Let's go back one year, the 1995 kickoff. Dick Tomey had to agonize through the opener. Georgia Tech struck early as Tommy Luganville hit Derek Stiegel for a 14-yard touchdown. The Yellow Jackets were all fired up, but Arizona's Desert Swarm defense kept them in the game. Down 14-13 with 29 seconds left. Kevin Schmidtke took it in from six yards out to avoid a major upset. But a major upset is taking place here in Tucson. Last year's game was in Atlanta. Here in Tucson, Georgia Tech has a 12-point lead inside seven minutes and 20 seconds to go. And Tech running the football and facing a fourth down and three. You know, there, there's time left for Arizona because they, they do have big play potential. I mean, it's not a lot of time left, but they got time to a good drive and then hopefully, you know, get a good turnover or some, something and be able to come in and score twice. But Georgia Tech just want to really maintain ball control, run the ball, and run out the clock. The clock is their, their uh, best asset right now. They want to be able to use it, Georgia Tech. They're letting the clock just wind down. They will take the penalty and have it pushed back five yards. Weaver doesn't care. He just wants to pooch it inside the 20-yard line anyway. But when George O'Leary took over, he said, I don't care if we throw the football a lot or run the football a lot. I want to control the ball a lot. I want to keep my defense off the field. And Georgia Tech in this game has five possessions over five minutes long. Arizona has just one. That's well, ball control. That's ball control. That's what he wanted. I mean, being a defensive coordinator, you know, he know how important ball control is, and that's what he wants in, out of his team. Six minutes, 44 seconds to go. Weaver's hanging it up. Dice is letting it go. And it'll be first and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 20-yard line. Other upsets tonight in college football. Boston College beating number 20 Virginia Tech 20 to 14. Boston College was preseason ranked by some, and they top 25 then knocked out when they were really humbled by Ohio State. Well, here tonight, 197, and Arizona, if they lose, they will certainly fall out of the top 20 and maybe even out of the top 25. It's all passing now for Arizona. And they complete it to Carrie Taylor. All of a sudden, Georgia Tech going with the prevent defense. Their DBs are a little farther back than they were earlier, and Rodney Williams with a catch and a first down. Well, I'm definitely not a big fan of prevent defense. All prevent defense does is prevent you from winning because you open up wide plays and you can get 10 yards of the pop, 10 or 12 yards, and that's all you want to do, get 10 yards, get out of bounds. 10, 12 yards, get out of bounds. So. I'd like to really see them be more aggressive here and just do what they've been doing all game. It's been successful. It sure has, as Arizona has only one scoring drive tonight. And that was the opening drive of the second half. When things look sharp, they've cut it to two at 9-7. to seven. White again over the middle. Gary Taylor cuts back and leans forward to the 41-yard line close to a first down. But I believe he'll be about a foot, maybe two shy. Ryan Stewart on the tackle. And I don't go through the two-minute offense where they actually just go to the line and the quarterback calls to play the line. He's looking for Dice in the out. Dice has the catch. Richard Dice could go all the way. And he will. Touchdown, Arizona. 50 yards, Richard Dice. 
a big play. I mean, you know, never down by one touchdown. And that's what they need, a big play. They have the big play potential. Just a, a really bad mistake uh, by the cornerback. I think it was Perryman, just diving for the pass. In a situation like this, you want, if the court, receiver's going to catch the pass, you just want to make the tackle. Just a bad, bad mistake by, by a cornerback, and you never want to do this. And the coach will tell you every time, if a play like this, you want to make sure of the tackle. He, he's going for the, the, the bat down and just a veteran player making a mistake like that pyramid should never do that and the point after touchdown is good and we still have 557 left the score is exactly 1914 the exact score that arizona beat georgia tech one year ago dice is running an out pattern it's basically man-to-man -man co coverage it goes 10 12 yards breakout and uh, Perriman's going for the interception here, but one mistake here. You gotta always have your backhand on the receiver so you can make sure he doesn't go all the way. And Perriman just had that sneaky speed and just turns it on for the touchdown. All right, let's go down to the sideline. Tom, what do you have for us? All right, fellas, I guess it's asking you shall receive because offensive line coach Charlie Dickey just begged his big troops. He said, hey, please buy Danny some time. We have open receivers to seal off the off the line of scrimmage, seal off the gaps. And he reminded him of last year's Arizona State game. He said, guys, we are down two scores with eight minutes to go. We came back and won that one. We can do it. And hey, look what happened. We got a game again. Yeah, their big wins last year were against Arizona State where they won 28-27, also beating UCLA by 10 and Washington State by three. So Dan White right now has brought his team back. But really, it was against the prevent defense. Yeah, it was. And the prevent defense prevents you from uh, winning. But what happened is number 44, David Pleasant, just came in and, and knocked the offensive lineman way over. And Dan almost didn't have time to complete that pass. I and mean, you see the replay, he came over and just really came through. But Dan was able to get through the, the pass really quickly and make a big play. And that's what you want. So this changes things. A penalty against Georgia Tech. Now Arizona will kick off the 50-yard line. Does their kicker try and kick it high in the air, or does he take a chance here and go for the onside kick? Well, Georgia Tech is thinking the onside kick. If he kicks it high in the air, the receiver can just call for a fair catch. If he does that, you got five, six minutes left. They stop in three plays and get the ball back. They got a chance. now 15 of 26 through the air for 206 yards and two scores but he made one critical mistake or they would have the lead yeah absolutely and then that, that five points is even looking much bigger now than the five points they gave up earlier from the callback touchdown and then another touchdown was all back and a missed field goal so all those points add up the one mistake that dan white made was a pass to the left sideline Ryan Stewart picked it off, the right sideline, excuse me. Stewart picked it off and raced 40 yards for the touchdown. That's the difference in the game, as Georgia Tech has a 19-14 lead. Inside, six minutes to go. Davis will keep it and gain five yards to the 25-yard line, tackled by Mikhail Smith. Well, what they want to do there is just ball control. They want to be able to run the ball, get a couple of first downs. If they have to punt, they want to make Arizona go a long way. On that kickoff, I was very surprised at the 50-yard line. You push it up in the air about 10 to the 10 to 5-yard line, they can't do anything. If they fair catch, you got them way deep. If they catch it, you can tackle them inside the 10-yard line. Just moments ago, Arizona was staring in the face of the first defeat of the year, being stunned by Georgia Tech. Now their crowd believes. CJ, uh-uh. Chester Burnett, the sophomore from Denver, Colorado, just met him, helmet on helmet. Well, that's what you want to do, Chester's right in there. And just meet him and says, hello, not today. You've got to score over 150, not, not anymore. It's bear down time, that's what it is. A huge third and five. Now the Wildcats are believing. Option time. Davis is stung at the 26. It's a punting situation for Georgia Tech. Van Chouinet. You know, Georgia Tech got away a little bit.
bit from what they've been doing. They've had that quarterback putting pressure outside and running and throwing the ball. He didn't do it that time. He's trying to opt and try to play it safe, you know. But as he goes to option quarterback, he's option it. I mean, he had the pitch out maybe a little bit, but number 35 was scraping out the linebacker. So it, it was just a great play by, by Arizona defense. Four minutes to go. Arizona down by five. Physioc, Willie Gall, back with you in Tucson, Arizona, where the Wildcats are stunning Georgia Tech. Arizona was down 19 to 7 just five minutes ago, but now they are in front. A block punt, a big play pass from White to Dice. And now they will go for the two points to try and give themselves a three-point lead. White dumps it up. Taylor, can he get in? No. It stays 20 to 19. Arizona. Play. I mean, they really don't gain anything or lose anything. Well, they would have they had a tie with three points. Because if, if uh, Georgia Tech comes back and kick a field goal, they, you know, so it was a good play to go for, for two points. 
Well, it was special teams that have led the Arizona comeback. This is essentially what Coach O'Leary was worried about earlier, and that's why he didn't, he didn't have uh, Aaron Williams, Armin Williams comes in and blocks the punt and just goes through. And that's what Coach O'Leary was worried about earlier, and that's why he didn't have Rodney Williams punt, because he said it was too slow in his delivery. And then the quarterback sneak by Dan White, and he needed all six feet five of himself to get across that goal line and give Arizona the lead. There's the guy that blocked the punt right there. Big play. He'll jump into the bonus. I think he's going to get one of those little uh, decals on his helmet. That's right. I think he may be the special teams player of the week. The bear paw, the little bear paw it is. The little bear down, there's another bear paw, you know? Well, they didn't quit. That's right. We said Georgia Tech was the team that was bearing down. Then they made the mistake on the pass to Dice. He went the distance. The crowd got on their feet again, and they changed everything. C.J. Williams goes down at the 17-yard line. And here's what's interesting. Most option teams are not great comeback teams because they're not used to passing the football. Oklahoma was one of those teams that if they got the lead, they could flat put you away. But as a comeback team, can Donnie Davis lead his team down the field? And remember, their best receiver, Derek Stiegel, is back in Atlanta, Georgia with a hamstring injury. Well, all they need here is to drive down to about the 30-yard line and try a field goal. Three, three points are really giving them the win, but you know, it's going to be tough. they got to roll out and put some pressure on the defensive back and linebacker group. Arizona rushes four. Davis scrambling, looping it. say he bobbled it as he went out of bounds. I thought he had his feet in, but I did not see him bobble that football. Let's see if he has control here. He goes up. What a great catch. Oh. Oh, you're right. He did He did bobble it, and it also hit turf. Yeah. I don't know if he had control there. Well, that man has done a fabulous job coaching, but I'm sure he believes that you only are coaching a good game if you win. Absolutely. And his team trails by one. Two minutes, nine seconds remain in this college football game. Our Pac-10 opener on Prime Sports. Oh. Brandon Sanders fell down, or I think he has an interception. He was playing center field a good 25 yards off the line of scrimmage when, when he dropped back. He slipped and fell as the ball was approaching. Donnie Davis had Omar Cassidy almost wide open going down the sideline. It was a bad read because the safety was in the middle of the field. He had Omar Cassidy going down the, the sideline, the right sideline, and might have made a big play. He had his defender beat. It was an out and up move where the, the receiver goes down and out and then goes up the field. Third down and ten. Davis scrambling. Davis running. Oh, did he get it? Great effort by Donnie Davis. <laughs> Either way, it's four down. It's going to be close. To go for it. That is close. Oh, boy. Brandon, Brandon Sanders. <laughs> Brandon just lit him up there. Oh, great job. This is a great. That's what happened. Oh, man. He's got a running quarterback. Get out there. You know what? There were people who said, you got to watch this guy hit. He's like Ronnie Lott. That was a Ronnie Lott hit. Absolutely. And they love to hit those quarterbacks like that. First team all packed down. There are many of his teammates, they say, he is our best football player. Look at this guy. I mean, he's bleeding from his eye, from his nose. He's been patched up most of the first quarter. Oh, yeah. See, that's the type of defensive back you want. He has blood everywhere. He looks mean, you know, and he just goes down and just starts to slobber knock somewhere, as they say down on the side. Down on the side. That's right. First down. 156 to go. What an effort by Donnie Davis to get the first down. He was looking for Cedric Zachary again. He came up empty. Zachary was the receiver who had such a good game against Florida State last year with nine catches for 78 yards, but Tech lost badly to the Seminoles. Tell you what, if Donnie could have looked down to his right side, he had uh, Omar Cassidy down wide open, 
on the, on the back side with, with two receivers down and, and only Brandon Sanders had to cover both of them wide open. Middleton will go right. And Cassidy, the man really talking about, will be in the slot on the right side. Flag down, and it stops the play. Well, they were uh, bringing Ty McCray on the blitz number 49. George O'Leary, this one will be painful. He was the defensive coordinator for Bobby Ross for five years. And now he faces a second down and 15 situation. I mean, he produced such stars as Pat Swilling and Marco Coleman and Coleman Rudolph. He was a big part of the reason they won the national championship in 1990. Interesting note, Omar Cassidy is lined up on the slot side and he's going against Brandon Sanders on the, on the inside and he, what he's doing is going out and up. He had Brandon beat that time and if they go back to that because what happens is they're playing basically man-to-man -man with a free safety and when anytime you got man-to-man -man, you got to be able to throw it to those uh, receiver has to get open on the man-to-man -man coverage and if he looks down at this slot receiver going out and up he might be able to make a big play. remaining in this game. This has just been a wonderful game. I mean, Georgia Tech don't need to hold their head down because they played very well. They're 14-point underdog. They make a couple of crucial mistakes in the first quarter. You know, a callback touchdown. They threw it with five points with the difference in the game. For Arizona, you got to really take your head off to them. They came back. They were down. They were down out for the count, but they came back fighting. O'Leary. He had the victory. And his goal will not get any easier as he will take on Virginia at Virginia next week and be home to Maryland, Duke, North Carolina, and then the number one team in the nation, Florida State. Well, we want you to tune in after the game for all the latest scores and highlights on Press Box on your regional sports network. Check your local listing. They'll fill you in on what's going on around college football and around Major League Baseball. Bennett races continue, and we did have another upset today in college football. Number 20 team was beat. And it appears that number 17, Arizona, was beat. All right. Seven minutes ago, these guys were hanging their heads. They couldn't yeah. believe it. Well, it just shows a lot of character for a team to be able to come back like that. And, you know, like I said, I would love, love to have been something on the wall to see what folks said to them at halftime because they really came back out fired up on the second half. They did really, but they really didn't do anything. I mean, they came out, scored the touchdown. Then after the interception, they went south again. Right. But Dice, when Dice makes the catch and Perryman made the mistake right. on that prevent defense and goes the distance, 
All of a sudden, that low one swung dramatically in, right. the, in the Wildcats' favor. Well, you look at it, they, they missed a block punt earlier also, which could have been a difference too. So they actually, they had two block punts in this game, uh, but they missed the first one, got the second one. The big mistake by Perriman, which he really should never do that as he puts it back. Flags go fly, and there will be some frustrated Georgia Tech players, particularly the more experienced ones, who were the guys who had to suffer the painful defeat last year. And they were leading with 29 seconds to go, but Kevin Schmidtke went up the middle, six yards out, scored the game-winning touchdown, and Arizona won 19-14. This oh. year, George O'Leary was leading Dead by ball. that score, 19-14. Offside, His punter defense. His blocked and Dead recovered ball. at the four-yard line. Defense. And Arizona went in from a yard out, and Dan White scored the go-ahead touchdown. Well, I think this is going to be a big learning experience for Georgia Tech. I mean, you can't make mistakes against big teams and, and top 20 teams or, or any team that's not really playing well is going to be able to not win the game and they made two first mistakes in the first quarter second quarter you know they had a big penalty down where they had a first down to 50 45 yard line that was way back to the 20 you just can't do things like that against a good team like this and they'll learn from that and go back and do very well in ACC Georgia Tech played 53 minutes of error free football no interceptions right. no fumbles no block punts right. And that, that's the positive thing that they can go back and build on. I mean, you look at it, it's only two, one game out of the season of, of 11. So they're one and one, now they go back and, you know, they can still win nine more games. So it's a big learning experience for them, and hopefully they'll take it, the young kids and go out and, and learn from it. And on the flip side of that, Arizona has to be really pleased to win this game, get out, because really, when you look at the way they played, they really didn't win the game. They, they had some big plays, but they'll go back and build on it for, for next week. I think Dick Tomey is going to go home, go to sleep, wake up tomorrow, and have to go outside and get the newspaper right. to really believe that his team won this football game because they were stunned by George O'Leary's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets for a good 53, 54 minutes. And I think Dick Comey absolutely shocked that his team was able to come back and win this game. But they did, 20 to 19. They are true to their theme on the field. Bear down. <laughs> they bear down on this one and come back to beat Georgia Tech 20 to 19. We'll be right back to close this one out on Prime Sports. What a way to kick off the first of 17 games on Prime Sports with the Pacific 10 Conference as they come from behind, down 12, 19 to 7, to beat Georgia Tech 20 to 19. And our player of the game, Dan White, who scored the game-winning touchdown, throws 15 completions in 26 attempts for 206 yards. He ran in for the one touchdown. He brought his team back when he hit Richard Dice, his favorite receiver on the right flat, and he scooted 50 yards to bring them back in the game. Throws two touchdowns in the game. Dan White, our player of the game, will come back with an interview of our player of the game right after you hear this on Prime Sports. The number 17 team in the nation has to come back from 12 down to beat Georgia Tech 20 to 19. And the hero of the game, Dan White. He's on the field with our Tom Kirkland. Tom? All right, Steve, the Dan White legend continues now 18 and 5 as a starter here for his career at Arizona. Boy, this was not easy. No, it wasn't at all. We didn't play real well. I didn't play real well for the first uh, three quarters. Made a big interception, a bad read on that. So I think that didn't play real well the whole game, but I think that our team came back and made some big plays, which is a real key right now. The win is the main factor. Yeah, what happened there in the last couple of minutes? I mean, I heard the defense, the offensive line coach saying, hey, we can come back. He was talking about Arizona State last year, but you guys were buried with six and a half to go. Yeah, we just we kept on believing. I mean, we need big plays, and we got them. And I think that it shows a lot about our team and our character. And I think that uh, from now on, we got to build from this and not get ourselves in a bad position like we were. But I think that it proves we have some, uh, some power to make some big plays at big times. Yeah, and uh, Coach has talked about your toughness. What was it like for you after that interception to come back and lead uh, one of the greatest comeback wins that we've seen in a long time? Um, I mean, it was, I, was, I was down, but I mean, I, was, I threw a pick early last game also. I got to start, I got to stop making those mistakes. But I think that being a quarterback, you can't worry about what you did wrong. If you do that, you just get yourself in the gutter and you start doing that worse. So I think that being a quarterback, it's always got to be positive. You got to stay focused on the positive. 
and even if we weren't to a winner, I, uh, I have to stay positive and just, uh, just try to make some plays. Obviously, you do have some work to do before the Pac-10 starts. Oh, for sure. I mean, if we play like that, we're not going to beat anybody in the Pac-10. So we know that, but we'll just take the win right now and then starting tomorrow, we'll look at the film and try to uh, improve from there. Game effort from Georgia Tech. What's that? Game effort from Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah, they're a great team. Okay, thanks a lot, Dan. Congratulations. We'll see you down the road. That's the story down here. I mean, it doesn't get any more tense than this. Arizona with another <laughs> incredible come from behind win. Uh, send it back up to Steven. Uh, Willie, you, can you guys top that? Absolutely no way, but uh, what a thrilling finish on Prime Sports as Georgia Tech loses to the Arizona Wildcats 20 to 19. We'll come back to wrap things up right after this. is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. And by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Steve Fiziak with Willie Galt at Arizona Stadium in Tucson, where this city is surrounded by four huge mountain ranges. And <laughs> the close of this game, I think Georgia Tech could feel that granite beginning to close around them as Arizona comes from behind.